on the call. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Uh, three, two, one. Hey, guys, what's going on? And welcome to episode 225 of the KV Mod podcast. It is February 21st, 2016. And uh, we've got a good cast here coming, you, coming your way. I'm just going to say it now. I've got a good feeling about the cast. If you're in your car, if you downloaded the cast recently, if you're watching live, listening live, you picked a good one to be at. I mean, I know it's always going to be good when we have all Sham No Wow joining us on the podcast. No Would pressure, stop Sham. stop stroking it? Stop. <laughs> just really stroking <laughs> Sham right now. But I'm glad. Uh, thanks for jumping on, Sham. It's always fun to have no you problem. here. No problem. And uh, we've, got, uh, we've got somebody who's worked behind the scenes at KB Mod for a really long time and also... Yeah. Helps me a ton with my channel. Uh, Hutchison fifteen, Brad, you're you're popping your uh, your not is it podcast cherry? Have you been on any other podcast before? Actually, no, this is actually my first one. Yeah. Okay. All right. Absolutely. Well, I've I brought the lube and I've made and I've also brought a video camera. I hope you don't mind. If that's is that fine? It, it takes two to tango, so you know I'm just yeah. I'm ready to go, man. So Brad Brad does uh, helps get the doc together every week. He does a he just Brad is a dynamo. I mean I don't have to. I'm just, I'm just, I just want to suck everybody off tonight. I don't know. I mean, whatever. Any, anytime fine. you see a tweet go out that has a yeah. picture and looks like it was even like remotely, remotely okay. Yeah. Any kind of thought put into it. Yeah. 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 Anytime <laughs> you see anything where there's thought put into it, it's probably him. If it's just a piece of shit, it's 100% me or somebody else at KB Mind. Well, I wouldn't say, Brandon, you, you put some effort, but you know. Um, no, I but, put some yeah, effort, but, I, but like, I don't, I don't. That's why I say like the images, the like custom stuff. Yeah, no, like, yeah. I don't, practice. I don't do any of that. I go through the motions. Yeah, Brad does all that. So anyway, it's good to have you, Brad, uh, on the cast. Uh, and Thank of you course, for having uh, me. Yeah, we've got uh, we've got Katie Zen, man, a regular now at this point, Katie. We can just call you a regular. But you were gone for two weeks or three weeks while yeah. your computer uh, was nuked. So it's good. Uh, it's good that you got it back from the Geek Squad, and things are good. Yeah, you can call me a regular. That sometimes isn't on most of the time. Not always. <laughs> like can, that, that kind of regular. Okay. That's about oh, as wow. well as yeah, you can yeah, say. It's that's about cool. a regular. I am. Well, I mean, you made your bet, so there's that. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah, true. It's, you it's know, really, it is really. Katie says room looks phenomenal. I didn't think it'd be that big of a deal, to be honest. Like looking at it before I sat down and like joined Skype, I'm like yeah, people won't care. But then, goddamn, it was a uh, looks, looks really good. Just watch out if, uh, if 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 anyone named Bustler Hustler Katie Zen comes into. I just want. Oh Jesus to Christ! If he comes no. into the chat. I just want you to ignore him and keep. I'm just gonna ban him. Okay. Honestly. Well, I don't keep know about focus. That. Keep Just keep focus because he is persistent yeah. and he really likes you. Okay. Um, but yeah, let's uh, talk about what we've done, what we did this week. Brandon, we're going to start with you because you actually just got back from a little bit of a, a ski trip, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. No. And if you were watching live, you could see that Brandon has a snow tan. Whereas, <laughs> oh, <sunburn. laughs> this is just actual sunburn. Like I've gotten windburn before uh, oh, okay. from, from oh. snowboarding, but this is just legit sunburn because it was actually kind of warm outside. And, uh, and I didn't put sunscreen on because, you know, you don't think you're going to need that. Um, but, yeah, so I've got a nice, uh, like, a nice red face going on here. It actually looks worse because I'm, like, the fluorescent light of my monitors is kind of kind of making me look like a ghost. Yeah. That might just be your natural skin color, but fair well, enough. Well, I mean, maybe. I know, I know but, what you mean. Uh, so how, yeah. was, how was the actual, how was the snowboarding, the skiing? It was good. It was really yeah. good. Uh, I mean, the, the weather was really nice. Uh, it snowed a little bit, like while we were driving there, but didn't really snow while we were there. Um, the The conditions were pretty good. It was kind of warm during the day. Um, yeah, I mean, I hadn't s snowboarded in like I think maybe at least a year or two. So that was. Brandon, fun. do you do any sick? Like, do you go off six? Like, do you do ten eighties? Like, what what level of snowboarder? Ten eighties. I'm. I am definitely not like. Okay, I I've never I snowboarded I'm, actually before, so I, I, I would know. love. I, to. I mean, I'm not, I'm not awful, but I am not. Uh, like I would say, I'm, I'm sort of just below intermediate, because like I'm not a beginner. I can, I can ski, I can ski greens and blues fine, but I don't go, I don't go very fast. Like mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm just kind of a casual snowboarder. Do, you do, skis, have, ha do skis have training wheels that you that you wear, <laughs> Brandon? <laughs> Yeah, are there I mean, helpful aids? <laughs> yeah, like if I because I've I've only I think I've I skied like twice in my life. I was I was on the I was not, anyway. I mean, imagine me skiing, not the most graceful thing. <laughs> not anymore. But <laughs> called an avalanche. But yeah, I didn't. There wasn't. I was really pissed off when the first time I skied. I was like, "There's no like uh like you know when you're bowling and they have you can put up the fucking." Uh, the bl what do they call those? <laughs> oh, the like, fences. Yeah, the fences. I was like, "There's really." I mean, I guess they have those with the easier courses, but. So did you have any like major wipeouts or anything this time? You, you no, break no, that was why. I mean, that's one of the reasons like I've learned over time 
that if you only go snowboarding every, say every year or two, or, or even like less than that, the, the goal really is just not to wipe out or injure yourself because you have right. to kind of relearn right. each time you go. Yeah. And so I hadn't been in a couple of, uh, like a couple of years. And so this time, you know, I was just like, I was just trying to be, just trying to have fun, like not get hurt. And so I didn't really, I <laughs> fell, I fell like once yeah. um, that and it wasn't like a hard fall. It was just kind of, you know, lo- kind of lost my footing. From um, doing a sick 180, right? I mean, yeah, yeah, like <laughs> obviously. Brandon plays 1080 snowboarding on the N64 to get ready for, uh, or was it N64? <laughs> that was an N64 game, right? Yeah, it was yeah, 1080. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I, uh, but I, I did actually like I did kind of go off of a, a little bit of a a jump, like yeah. kind of accidentally. Okay. Um, but I sort of landed like I kind of landed sideways, where you just kind of shuffle snow and like I didn't I didn't want to ga- gain speed from that jump, so I yeah I it was a good trip. I mean that's good. I came that's back good. with a little bit of sunburn, but like no, I'm not really even that sore. Um, no no broken anything. Like it, it was a successful trip. I mean, I had to drive there and back. So if I had injured myself, it would have been a real problem. Yeah, that's good. Well, I'm glad oh, you, wow, you that, survived safe. That snowboarding game that you yeah, liked, that 1080 snowboarding. 1080, I dude. I just this. remember it because of like the ads. I remember the ads being kind of super over the top. Yeah, for that I game. remember 1080 snowboarding. It's pretty good. 1080 pretty snowboarding and Snowboard Kids were both yeah. solid games. Yeah, I yeah, think I yeah. Was, I only I only ever played SSX. I never played. Oh, SSX any, was a great other snowboarding too. games. Yeah, SSX. That's PlayStation though, right? Wasn't it? I don't think that was sixty four. Um, What's that? yeah, that was PlayStation 64. two. Uh, yeah, it, it, that's where it started. I guess was let's see. Uh, yeah, it started uh, on PlayStation two. Yeah, that's where yeah, it started. Yeah, I remember that franchise. Yeah, did you ever snow? Because you you uh, skateboard a bit, right? I yeah. I snowboarded one time. Um, okay. My my family we took a trip up to uh, to Tennessee for Christmas one year, and it and they have a uh, a skiing and snowboarding area up there. Yeah. And I tried snowboarding for a bit. Um, it was rental gear, so it was it was a very obnoxious process. And then I didn't I didn't have proper gloves. The gloves that I had weren't waterproof, and it oh god ooh, oh god <laughs> just get a little cold. Don't don't touch snow without waterproof gloves, man, because that shit will just melt uh, to oh, your body heat. It's like and the worst design decision of all time. Yeah, it's like, so yeah, bad. Waterproof. I just yeah. I, I didn't I didn't have any proper gloves to bring, so I, I got stuck out in the cold there, and I yeah. just went onto the training slope and fell a bunch. I you know I I was just trying on my own. I didn't have anybody teaching me how to ride. I was just going on my own and had had some fun, but uh, it was a little frustrating. <laughs> Okay. But that was do, the only do, time I ever tried. Do, uh, do skateboarding skills translate to snowboarding at all, though? Like, did you feel, or were you just like, eh? Uh, no, I, I, no I, I, really. I didn't feel, I didn't feel comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> Brad, what about not. you? Your chime it's, in. It's, di- it's different when a board is is stuck to you, and that's the only option you have. Yeah, that's it, a good is point. Is that it's yeah. stuck to you? It's like it with skateboarding, stuck. you can bail out, and then you're back on your own feet, and that's comfortable. Yeah. Snowboard, you have to. It becomes an extension of yourself, so. That's, yeah, that's to, why, that's why I try it. and stay so safe when I'm when I'm on a snowboard because if you if you do wipe out the snowboard's not coming off your yeah. legs are just going to yeah. like bend the other way so yeah. it's not like skiing where the skis will come off if you know if you fall down so I I've had a couple of wipeouts in the past that like never seriously injured but just sort of one of those where you you debate walking down the mountain instead of boarding down it once you get up. And I just don't, I don't really want to do that again. Um, Brad, you were chiming in. I mean, Oregon actually known as the number one snowboarding state in the, uh, in the, in the country. <laughs> yeah, that's, so. is, is that's that actually true? what I have a sponsorship oh. for. Yeah, I am a sponsored Snow- snowboarder. You're a sponsored yeah. snowboarder. See, you're always full of surprises. No, but uh, you, you snowboard, skateboard, Brad? Because you were, you were about uh, to No, I, I've, I've snowboarded a couple times, but it's, uh, I don't know. I just haven't been around long enough. And like yeah. a sink place to so go you're so we don't have any like we don't have any premier snowboarders in this in this call. Katie's at a mask. <laughs> no professional. Make no, sure. no. Katie's in actually turns out to be a pro snowboarder that none of us <laughs> yeah. recognize. I'm even though this is like the sport's that big. Oh my god. Yeah. Okay. So I rode a hoverboard. Uh, okay. Really not the same. Okay. Yeah, definitely not the same. Sure. All right. Well, that's good. I'm glad Brandon didn't uh, break any bones and and is and is alive. Did anyone else do anything fun this week that they would like to share? We'll jump into what we've been playing in a minute, but. Katie's not shaking his head already, so no. I'm not gonna <laughs> not gonna keep going if I don't need to. Um, we don't do I'm trying anything to think, fun. Yeah, none of. I mean, we're all fucking. There. I'm trying to <laughs> think if I have anything of note this week that other. Um, 
No, no, nothing at all. All right, let's. Well, that was sad. <laughs> Why do I do on. that? Most weeks there's at least something. I should have come more prepared. I, mean, I, I had thinking. a dentist appointment in the middle of the oh week. Oh my god! Which was <laughs> shit. <laughs> oh yeah. Not fun. That's not my idea of fun, personally. No. It's Speaking of, I not. really need to go to the dentist. It's like it's been too long. <laughs> I spent I, all day downloading one game on my Wii U because I don't oh have an god. adapter for oh a wired god. connection. So I, I, I had to use my uh, wireless to download Bayonetta, which is 14 gigabytes, and it took oh, over. Geez. Three hours to download, and then and then an extra hour to install. So I just sat around yeah. all day <laughs> <laughs> waiting for that. Oh man! The first That's day bad. I got my Wii U, it was just countless, countless update updates like to set it up in every game that like you try to play on it. You have to download like updates. All right, you know what? Someone did so point slow. this out. So I, I for some godforsaken reason, I decided to open up a PO box, and people were like, you know, Haha, we want to send you stuff, and I was like, and again, I get the, you know, inbox is not coming back. Shut the fuck up. But I do have my own PO box, and the first, no joke, this is, I, this was on Saturday. The oh, first, the first thing I open in the mail, it's just this. I'm gonna show you on the stream, actually. Okay. Well, you're gonna have to listen. Listening is fine too. It just came in this box. It's just this uh, pretty unidentifiable white box. It sounds like there's like a card in it or something. You can you can hear that. And so I have no idea what it is. So I'm like, what? Who? What is this? What the fuck is this? So I open it up, and you're gonna hear what it is in just a moment. Okay. Oh God. Oh. God damn it. Oh no God. joke. The first piece of mail I open up, it is literally a website called you it's called rickrollbymail.com. It is a $14 box you can send somebody <laughs> with a little fucking circuit board and a and a fucking pressure sensitive trigger when you open it up. And so <laughs> you know that in my stream people still love to do the rickroll, uh. just beating it into the ground. And so actually I had to I thought it was pretty funny that that was the first thing I opened up. And definitely now the stakes are higher because people were like, yeah, I'll work roll you through the mail. And I thought it was going to be like, you know, send me a poem or something where I don't realize it. No, I mean, they, they successfully did it. So I guess I don't know that's if that's really the, impressive, nope, but it was pretty impressive that they that was actually the first thing. That, I is, that is awesome. Anyway, that, I, that, that, that website also sells uh, the a John Cena box as well, which is nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice oh, it's John, John Cena, Cena box. Yes. For fourteen yeah. bucks, yeah, you know that—that's what I want. I want to be the guy who who comes up with a business based <laughs> on memes, <laughs> I and know, just I did this, dude. Oh I, wow, fourteen dollars for that little thing. I mean, impressive. Man. So, yeah, that was, I guess, the most exciting thing uh, this week that that happened to me. But uh, gaming wise, Katie Zen, you're smiling. You look like you had a good week in gaming, maybe. What? <laughs> We're going to me now. Or? Yeah, let's. Uh, yeah, what, what did you okay. play? Yeah, let's talk about it. Uh, well, I played. My name is Mayo. That we uh, <laughs> we talked about. Oh, for a bit, uh, oh my god! Did you? Did. did you? It really? was fifty nine cents. <laughs> it was fifty. God, it was garbage. <laughs> but what? what I mean, it? what can it's I? It's a clicker game, isn't it? Or yeah, it was a clicker game. It's a clicker game that costs money. You could play better free clicker games. But no, if you want 50 achievements in 20 minutes, like oh, some okay. genius thought that like they could. So instead of clicking, you can also hit the space bar. So okay. I literally made like a macro of about 30 keyboard like space bar push pushes and like put it on continuous loop. And I like taped down my key. <laughs> I just love <left. laughs> oh, all the achievements. It was the effort. so you got all the achievements for Steam essentially. Oh yeah, that's the only reason anyone should ever that buy, really buy that game is for achievements, and the yeah. game knows it. Yeah, but yeah, that was that was the waste of money that I thought it was going to be. Okay, but, uh, so I guess not the worst, but still. No. What else? Anything else? Uh, downfall. If oh, we want to, okay. we want to yeah. get into that now, or I played that as well. Sure, we could, yeah. uh, because I played that as well. So yeah, you can go ahead Let's talk about downfall a little bit. No. So, God, where do I even begin? The oh, it's, it's this uh, it's this 2D. It used to be a freeware game back in like 2009, yeah. And it got a. I'm not sure what all was in like the update they did. I I hope to God that those are definitely most likely the original voice actors, or maybe yeah, they're one voice actors. I could see it going. That's a good way. question too. I don't know. I mean, obviously the Steam version, their Steam achievements, they cleaned up a bunch of stuff, but yeah. And if you buy the yeah. version that's on Steam, you get the re-release as well as the like original. Uh, like version of it if you want to like go back and forth but 
It's from what I've played. You play, you're for, you're farther in it than I am. But from what I've played, yeah. Uh, how far am I? I'm like two hours in, and it's it's really interesting. It's not scary. No, like really. of course not. Like. There were a few so, moments that actually creeped me out a little bit. Did you get to the yeah. part? It depends on where you go. Did you get to the part where I again downfall spoilers? I whatever. Oh man, uh, where there's all the there's the four fat suicided women in the. That's uh, the only like, part what? of your stream I saw. The <laughs> yeah, only really? part I got, I got there. I tuned yeah. into that. Yeah. Did you give uh, Did you give that girl the poison? Yes. Right. Yes. That which, part. Which color did you give the girl? Did you give her I red or blue? Her, so I saved before I gave her each one, and there That's was no difference. Thing. Yeah. Oh, really? I didn't know that. There's that makes no, me feel better. Because like everyone told me I fucked up when her head exploded. Spoilers. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. So, it's Stuff hard like to describe. Cool. Like, I'm, uh, yeah, but we should try to paint for people a picture. So it's like black and white with, I guess, red is the only other color yeah, in the game. it's the only color. For the most part. Yeah. And it's, it's cool. I mean, it's the art isn't bad. No, I mean, it's not. Sam, it's the, the voice, voice acting is pretty is fucking horrendous. terrible. Yeah. It's, uh, the dialogue options, though, there's quite a few of them uh, per yeah, conversation. And, and the writing's not very good. Like no. you're a lot of the times you're going to say things that you don't want to say. Like you know, you're going to give options that you like. I'll tell you though, uh, in my stream, like KZM, when I was playing it, people either people there was like no in between. Either it was like the worst thing that people had ever seen. I think mostly because of the voice <laughs> acting, which I didn't agree. I was like, yeah. I played so much worse than this game. Like this game yeah. is playable, and like sure, the voice acting isn't good, but. You know, like it's at least, you know, like anyway, a lot of it is like combining items to figure out like the, the puzzles aren't like complicated or anything for the most part. It's just like combining items and figuring out where you can use them like any kind of like adventure, I guess, game. Yeah. But um, I, I don't know, like it, it's intriguing to me to the point that I want to continue it. Um, but I also there's also certain parts that, like you said, just kind of really fall flat. And there's other parts that are like, OK, I don't know. Yeah, like this is, you know, it's interesting. Yeah. And. It's for, it has very positive like user reviews. On it does. Steam. People I, really like, like it. I feel like it's a cult classic in that sense. Oh, for sure. And I, that's what's compelling me to play it. Is like I need yeah. to know what is making these people, like, what there because there's got to be some good shit at the end. I refuse to believe that it has like a bad ending. Or maybe they just love the cat lady so much. But yeah, either. I don't know. Everyone's saying a lot of people in my chat were so. There's another game called The Cat Lady, which is the same guy who in the yeah. studio who made yeah, it. Yeah, that one got more popular. It, that one came yeah. out what like 2011 or 2012 or something like that. Yeah, I, I think, think that just it just had more traction, like YouTube personalities. Ah, uh, we're playing that. Okay, yeah. gotcha. gotcha. Yeah, and that one I haven't seen anything on, so I do want to give a try to. People are saying that that game seems to be people's like respected wise is is a lot more respected than this game, but I, I don't know. Um, or people like it more. It's a more polished game. But yeah, oh. I think it's definitely people couldn't believe, though, that I paid. It was on Steam sale and I paid like twelve forty nine <laughs> yeah. for it or something. People were like, this game costs oh, yeah. money. And I was like, come on, yeah, guys, that's... really? I've played. I don't know. I feel like people haven't played the shit that like me, Sham. I mean, especially Sham. Sham literally. <laughs> Sham fucking duck channel, dynasty. Deep diving. The worst. Sham goes in. Oh, my God. But oh. so like when, when there's a game that's competent and has like clearly like the subject matter and like the person behind. I'm not saying that excuses like certain things that are just bad, but yeah. I don't think I was like looking through it at rose with rose colored glasses personally, Katie. Like I feel like I'm I'm the same sense that you are, where it was like I was intrigued enough to keep playing throughout. Like I don't know, like I don't think it's terrible, and I and yeah. I, I want to see what happens at the end. People say that it gets I even agree. more fucked up. It's kind of yeah, like, already like ten yeah. minutes in, I was noticing things that were happening to you that were like completely different than when I was getting like oh, for example yeah. the prologue, mm -hmm. like the cat, like it jumped away from me for some reason. Huh? Okay. Like, like interesting. Like, I don't know. But yeah, it's. I mean, I'm definitely gonna finish it. Yeah, but uh, it's definitely interesting. Yeah. Okay. Other Anything than that, starts. I played uh, Street Fighter Five. I played a bit of that. I have uh, friends that are just fighting game fanatics, so we we stayed up for like five hours playing that. And that is a really, really solid, fun fighting game. If not for everyone has already talked about, you know, just the real lack of content. That I'm really beating a. I'm sure everybody knows that. Oh, okay. Super I thought you were going to say because they basically. People who went, don't have never heard of a video game before know yeah. about Street Fighter V and its yeah. launch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. I thought you were going to say, I thought you were going in a totally different direction because I couldn't stop. Because I, so I played Street Fighter. I'll just go. Katie Zen and I basically played the same games this week. Street Fighter V, I did that. I just do that fight night uh, with Diction on Wednesday. So we, oh, yeah, we did that's right. that. Yeah. And we played it. And I, same, I thought it was. Anyway, I thought it felt a lot more accessible even than Street Fighter 4 did. I don't know if it feels faster because of like if it's frame rate or what or just maybe the new animations, but I felt like it was really smooth. 
Obviously not yeah, the I launch, know. but once we got into the game, actually playing against each other, it was really like, even online was really solid. I wasn't getting any of that frame stuff that some people were talking about, and yeah. uh, the the boobage man. They went they good guys. The sex appeal and I thought that's where you were going with this. They just straight up, dude. They were just like, you know what, dead yeah. or alive, you've had your time. It's time for Street Fighter to <laughs> step time. into the sex realm. Have you I was like that, actually uh, stunned at some of the. Have you seen like, that glitch where you pick Chun Li on the right side of the screen? <laughs> oh no! And she like they forgot to code what keeps her like boobs in place. What? So that I they just they just what? like they honestly <laughs> do. It's I'm speechless. But, Katie Zen uh, is making a motion that they are just fl- <laughs> flying around in a circular motion. I, I guess. Yeah. I have not seen not, that. Not good for audio but, uh, listeners, but uh. Yeah, I thought that yeah, was I extremely think... noticeable. I was just like, what? Okay. Yeah. Hello, they really much. went for it. Is the door shut? So. No. <laughs> but, uh, I flipped my desk over on the first load in when I picked the first real character. But, yeah. yeah. Control, my controller just flew out of my hands. I don't know. Like, but yeah, they definitely up the uh, up the sex appeal with that. But. Yeah, definitely. One thing um, I heard too is that uh, for a lot of like the inputs for like specials or other just moves, yeah. they like the you have more frames to input the inputs, mm-hmm. I okay. guess. Okay. So this is another thing to make it more accessible. That's, that's what, what I. I mean. that, that's what. I, that's what it felt like. Because I am somebody that's. Fun. I'm. Ter- I mean, Diction and I just play for fun. But oh yeah, it, it felt like I was like but, uh, when I would pull stuff off. I was like, I know it's not because I'm good. I know yeah. that they made this more accessible. 100. Just have to mash. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like if I'm mashing and then all of a sudden I do a, a super or, or whatever. It, even like using. Uh, I guess there's the V meter, right? Is that the? Is that? Yeah, the yeah, the V meter. Yeah, even using that, where it's just like if you're using a controller, it's left trigger and then right. Um, right click. I don't even know what it was, but it was L1. everything L1. super accessible. L one, yeah. yeah. So, uh, who do you mean? Who's your what? main? Oh, who's, who's my main? main? Oh, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Who's the? I really like the the, the wrestling character. Uh, the the female wrestling character who comes. Who's like? Oh, of course that'd be your main. Well, no, not because of that. I want to but talk about like boobs. Then say Rainbow Mika is going to be your main. <laughs> no, I just, I just like her. I like her moves, man. Okay, I like that's her it. personality. Her <laughs> she's got, just, she's got two insane personalities. She's really well. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I like Street Fighter Five as well. <laughs> I played. I even went in like I did, I went in and I started playing. I was like, oh, let's check out the uh, the story mode for all these characters just to play through it, <laughs> just to see what it was like. And I was like, yeah, they really. I mean, the voice acting was funny and very and obviously anime. But um, I was like, they really don't give a shit about the. It's not like M. It's not like I, which makes sense. Again, it's a competitive fighting game, and like the focus is on, like they're not really focused so much on the story. But I, I guess think I went in expecting almost like a Mortal Kombat experience, and that's not the right thing to do. No. Jeff definitely just kind of like throwing. I mean, together. definitely not with the release the way that they did it because they no. only released it this way to get it out exactly. there for the competitive scene. That's really yeah. the only reason. So yeah, yeah it's. I don't already, know why I tried any other modes, but it's yeah. already confirmed for Evo. Like yeah. Before the game even released, it was. Yeah. I tried to play it, but my fight stick, I couldn't get. I couldn't get the drivers to work on my PC, and I haven't fixed it yet. So I have only put oh, like yeah. twenty minutes into Street Fighter Five now. Okay. But I got it. I got yeah. it for free, so I'm not mad. <laughs> yeah. I heard that's really fucked up. That like PS4 fight sticks for this game that's like PC and console exclusive on the PS4. Like PS4 fight sticks aren't recognized by the PS. Yeah, I, I have a PS3 one, and uh, it's been yeah. it's recognized on another PC, but this one it just didn't. It wasn't compatible at, up at first, so I need to go and find the the fix for it, which I just haven't done yet out of laziness. I gotcha. But yeah, one more thing I played. The yes. new Fire Emblem came out on the 3DS. Okay. That game is fucking fantastic. I love it. It's great. Okay. All right. Anyone there you the go. Yeah. And uh, I'm trying to think. I'll just go because I – so I played Street Fighter V as well. I played Downfall. We talked about that. Obviously Counter-Strike. Uh, is there anything I'm missing? I don't think so. I think those are the main ones I wanted to uh, to cover. So uh, Brad, what about you? What you play? What did you play this week? Um, I didn't actually play much until – Friday night, buddy told me to get rust, so I bought oh, it. Okay. And since then, I've put in 22 hours. So. Oh my! Wow. You were hooked. Holy yeah, I, I don't know what it was about that game, but it's um, we had like a crew of like 10 people. We were just going in the server, fucking everyone up. So I mean, it was it was pretty good. T- tell me, tell me, sell me it's, on it's, sell me on Rust in it, elevator pitch me Rust. I've seen I've seen it. I've, I've seen. It's, it's basically Daisy and Minecraft with a I'm crafting out. system. Yeah, I'm out. <laughs> so, I hate both. It, of those. Now, no, I know I hate Minecraft, but, but you know I hate Daisy. But together and just I don't know, just 
getting to shit on 12 year olds and and um i can see that being really appealing though like the troll it was yeah so yeah so it's it's pretty good um i i want to play more so but normally games don't do that for me so it was really weird for me to just like sit down and play play game for so long but i think probably half of it is just some of my friends were playing like i think there are a lot of games like that that you just would never play by yourself then uh rust is you know my buddies are playing and it was so much better with like a crew i think so yeah you kind of need that motivation to go into a game like that having somebody yeah. else with you uh makes it a yeah. lot easier because i can't imagine how shitty it would be just play by yourself like it like yeah we just kill people on site and stuff like that so i mean it's just i don't know yeah but but that's all I've played. Um, I tried Counter Strike a little bit just to check out the new maps. Um, oh yeah, which, the operation. Yeah. yeah, the new operation, um, which looks looks pretty slick actually. I, I actually like what they've done to Nuke. Um, we'll go into that I think a little bit later. But if you guys want to talk about it then, but yeah, um, yeah we can talk a bit more. Later. It it looks pretty slick I think so. Yeah, I think I think it looks anyway. Shem and I definitely have a lot to talk about with that. But yeah, it yeah. I mean just as aesthetically, uh it's beautiful, I think. But we'll talk about how it actually uh plays. Uh, sorry, I, one more real quick before we go on to the next person. I did play uh Layers of Fear, the the finished version that is uh that is out. And um so oh. I played that on Friday with the with the girlfriend we actually because we had both played through. So it was like the original, um, I guess the the pre-release or the the beta or the alpha or whatever you want to call it that they had that wasn't completed. You played about two hours and the game just ended. So I was initially was like, well, do I really want to replay it? Because um, you know, like I figured that they would keep everything the same and then just add on like another two hours. So it was like it would be better if I could like just skip to that part. But what they actually did is they like reorganized a bunch of stuff and added a bunch of new rooms and like the order of stuff was a bunch of, was really different. And I don't know, Sham, did you play the final release of Layers of Fear? Or did you play like, no, the, I only the played the build? first release that came out. Okay. Uh, I haven't touched yeah. it since. What did you think? I'm curious of what your thoughts were on. on well, that. I mean, when it, <laughs> when it came out in early access, yeah. I liked most of it, yeah. but then it, then it ripped off PT. And then I was yeah. like, why? Yeah. What? I, so what, why totally would you do that? Really, why would you totally completely agree. ruin everything that you've done up until this point by having a carbon copy of, Event, of the jump? Uh, no it's, way! It's the yeah. jump scare. It's the jump scare of the woman grabbing you inside of the house in PT and it's just it's doing copy. that close up camera view, and then you pass out and you start over again. It does the exact same thing in Layers of Fear, and I was uh, like. Uh. Well, you you just completely flushed everything down the toilet that you've done up so, to this point. I totally agree. That didn't ruin it for the same in the same way that it did for me because in my mind I think I was so like, that was still there. That was still there in the. It final was release. still there. It was still okay. there in the final. And they actually did, even though that is like a I agree like a direct rip. I for some reason I was like well maybe they're just playing tribute to PT since PT will never have. I do. Anyway, I, I that's how I. I mean at least it's only a one like, one, one off moment. thing and yeah. you know you can kind of just try to let it go but yeah. Yeah, I, I know what it's, you're it really? it's too much for me. It, it just sticks with me that, that it yeah. was. Yeah, I will say in the final release, though, off. they did a bunch of really cool. The ending, I mean, the ending, it gets a little bit, it doesn't get long, but there's a few kind of, you just have to like really search for all the items and stuff to, to, to get through. Not necessarily be stuck, but you have to really like, it's just a matter of picking up actually a few like checker pieces, but they're all spread out throughout the room and then figuring out what triggers everything is confusing. Yeah. But they do some really like, and I thought what Layers of Fear did really well was the, the kind of the mindfuck stuff where like you would, you know, you go in a room jam and you would turn around and then the, oh, you know, yeah, the doors I, would be I, gone. I love that. And then they would like shit. be, yeah. yeah, coming in like it's a like it's a haunted house on you, like with the eye mm -hmm. and stuff. So anyway, I thought overall it was uh, it was pretty solid. And then the ending, um, apparently there's only one ending, but the the basically the painting that you complete, because as you play through Layers of Fear, basically you're um, I won't spoil who you're playing as, but you're like you're finding these pieces that finish this painting that you're doing. So it's like broken into six different sections. Uh, apparently, the painting that you get at the end is is different. Uh, there's like three different ones. But anyway, I, I think for the price and as far as like, you know, I don't the, the horror genre and like first person horror. I don't think there's a, there's so many shitty, terrible ones. This one at least tries <laughs> like to do something uh, where I mean, there's a lot of jump scares, but it also does build a decent amount of atmosphere. And there's just some really trippy, like mind stuff. So I think it's worth checking out. And they did a really cool press kit thing too, um, which again maybe made me a little bit more biased towards liking it. But they sent out um, a, a cool press kit that was basically like uh, art from the game, but then in a like really fucked up children's stories in a binded book that you could read through with with really cool art and uh, and then like a actual wax uh sealed letter with actual wax stamp and everything mm -hmm. um with like kind of information like 
apparently written from like one of the you know the guy who owns the house or whatever. So they did some cool stuff with it. I definitely think it's worth uh, it's worth trying out. Um, but I, I agree with Sham too. Yeah, I mean that PT moment is just straight. I mean that's not even yeah, it's not that, even a nod. It's just a lift. It's, it's is it really almost, that blatant? Oh, I mean, it is. I mean, it like, is. there's I no mean, question. None. Say like very very similar design on the character that jump scares you. The same kind of grab. The same kind yeah. of camera movement. Yep. I, yep. It's just one to one. It is. Oh, uh, like it has that little delay before the yep. sound. Yep. 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 I, it, like That's I said, crazy. It's, it's a carbon copy. <laughs> it is. It is 100 okay, percent okay. lit. Spoiler alert that that happens, but it, yeah, I mean, whatever. It it does happen, but um. So anyway, sorry, I wanted to mention that because that was something I played this week. Um, Brad, did you have anything else before we move on to the? Oh uh, no, that was that was pretty okay. much it, man. I think. Yeah. Sweet. What about you, Mark? What you've been playing so, this week? So uh, the usual stuff. Ro- a lot of Rocket League, a lot of Counter Strike. Uh, I've been. I'm on my fifth attempt at an XCOM two playthrough. Mm. <laughs> oh That's wow! Been, Are you doing the uh, you doing Iron Man or whatever? Uh, or yeah. Well, I I, d- I dumbed down to veteran difficulty, which is okay. the second highest difficulty. I started out on Commander uh, because I was playing on XCOM One. I was playing. Um, oh God! They they changed the difficulty level names. I was playing the equivalent of Commander in XCOM Two and XCOM One, and it was easier in XCOM One. Like they. Mm. The, the mm. ramp up is very fast in XCOM 2 and they kick the shit out of you early on. So I kept losing soldiers. So I just went down for the stream's sake because I kept <laughs> having to start over. Yeah. But I died again. Or I lost enough soldiers where I, I couldn't really progress that well anymore because no one was upgraded. But I decided to off stream go through the first like couple of hours of missions that everyone's already seen before because they they repeat the same basis for the missions but you know the 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 levels are randomly generated so that's where the uh the difference comes in is uh the the enemy placement and where you are and stuff like that but the missions are essentially the same so i was like no one's gonna care if they don't see this on stream and now i am having mm-hmm. the sickest playthrough i have <laughs> ever it. had in XCOM. Yep. i there 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 is a mission uh in the, in the first couple of missions in the game where you have to go and save civilians I saved every fucking civilian. No civilian died. I killed everything within four turns and got a flawless. And I'm like, what the fuck wow. is this RNG? I got so lucky this run. So I'm finally on a run that I think will go well and I'll finally be able to beat the game. But I'm having a lot of fun with that. I've put 20 hours into it and have come nowhere close to beating the game. So it's kind of sad for, from my point of view. But uh, it, it's a fun grind to try to uh, learn learn that game through and through and and play correctly because you, uh, you you can't be reckless. So right, right. Even when a you little make, bit that when I you watched. make bad decisions and you play on Iron Man, you're gonna pay yeah. for it because you can't go back and save save scum. Which is the fun for me. I like doing that as a challenge for the stream because it's it's no fun in my eyes if people watch me just save scum and go back if I make a mistake. It's like just man up and live with it. You fucked up. Just keep going. Yeah. Yeah. And lose the soldier. Who cares? But uh, yeah, the Counter Strike stuff. We played a lot of the new maps. Um, I think I've touched every Operation map, and I hate most of them. <laughs> Nuke yep. is Nuke is just fine. I I am really enjoying the uh, the 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 new design for it. Although I've only played a couple of games, and there's so much more to learn in terms of how to attack as terrorists and. Yeah. Uh, the the way that they've opened up different attacks that you can have on say like the upper site cuz yep. holy shit like be it, you know half the rafters being cut off uh at heaven totally changes how you play upper now yeah. so so many le- uh, uh so little um points to look at when you come out as a T that it's much yeah. easier to go in and and scope out normal uh spots that the CTs would be in and and hopefully get a couple of entry kills and you can actually like set up decent smokes out and flash out and be able to peek from hut because of the tall door. It just, it opens up a, a lot of new opportunity. I like the planting on the silo. It's, it's pretty neat to have those inside of the bomb sites like that. I mean, there's obviously improvements to be made and that's just going to be done through, uh, you know, millions of people playing the map and, and getting yeah, reports absolutely. and stuff. You know, that's just the life, the lifespan of a map. But I, there's like information that, Inferno might be next on the list and it seems like oh well maybe Nuke will take Inferno's place in the competitive map pool and then Inferno will go out in mm-hmm. order to be reworked and retooled so that'll be interesting if that actually does happen it's not confirmed but hey listen guys uh, just remove just remove train and 
Panuka. Panuka. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just I hate train. You know, I know but, you uh, like you really? like train, right? You, you really? I don't do. Like train? I really, I really don't do like love train. train. I actually, don't I? Th- I don't think train's a bad map. I just anyway. I really. You're I, just bad at it. I, 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 back, like, yeah. I like train I because train it's much. it's it's another one of those maps that adds a lot of dynamic play to it to yeah. it through a certain design and that's with the the ladders all over the trains and the way that that's set up you know like overpass is my favorite map because it's designed differently from the normal three lane type of thing yeah. like dust two or cash is which is a yep. pretty go-to map design i like yeah. cobblestone because it allows for shotgun play you know it, when, when we're able to you know have more fresh ideas come out in the way that we approach you know, playing out the game. I just like maps like that. So Train's a, another yeah. one that I like in that respect. And remember when but, Overpass came out, people hated it. I hated it, but yeah. Overpass went through some, I mean, Overpass is so different from the one that oh, it came out. And Nuke will be the same changed, way. Yeah. Nuke will be changed a bunch, I think. But the, um, the, the, the other Operation maps from people, uh, some some are interesting, you know, and fun to play, but Mikla is absolutely terrible. And, oh, and nothing but a... No, not, nothing but... T's rushing A because they can get there at the exact same time as the CTs do. So it just comes down to an an intro nade battle plus a. If the CTs don't get if picked, if they can uh, even get there, yeah. Mid. If they don't get picked yeah. off at mid, which is wide open save for a van, <laughs> yeah, it's, whole lot of fucking cover there. It's, it's a completely insane. wide open street. That most people get picked off from. It's the most obnoxious thing in the world. Uh, Cruz has like. Apparently, people have been finding invisible walls on crews that uh, have like uh, fucked up their movement or something. I I have fun on that because I like hostage maps. I think they're a silly break from the normal competitive play, and I like the openness of it. It's just a goofy aim duel map that just happens really uh, really fast off. Uh, but some of the other ones, I mean, I've only played them once or twice. I didn't mind Tulip, the one that's set in Amsterdam. I thought that that was okay. I like, uh, you know, the the red light district area and, and some of the other connections over <laughs> yeah, to the bomb sites. <laughs> I never I never felt like that map was super duper hard to play. Although on T's, it's a little tough to get into A because of the the choke point inside of that church. But I I don't know. It's I try not to get too up in arms about operation maps that. Are definitely just not made by people who are ready for that kind of map yeah, design. Absolutely. Like, like FM Pone, who you know has Santorini in there, Santorini. but FM Pone is a real map maker who has maps in the competitive pool. So, like, you you expect something out of those, yeah. but the other ones are just one offs to play because it's something different, and you can goof off with friends on maps that you don't know. But uh, other than the new maps, the missions. Have you tried the Guardian missions, the co op ones? I haven't yet. I've seen people streaming it, but so yeah, as as you go along, you know, you get to these parts where you have to like save a hostage or blow up a plant or something. And I played one of those last night, and it was actually kind of interesting. So it's just a completely different map setup with Mm -hmm. um, you going through a path where you're killing bots that are guarding this place, and you get to a hostage and you have to extract it. And you go through, and you also have like boss mobs, and you just uh, start out by picking a gun. Go and then heading off on the mission. It was kind of interesting. It's not, it's not very well fleshed out, and the bots are pretty stupid. And you dying comes down to fucking up your position or getting into a fight with one of the right. boss mobs who like has a shotgun and will one shot you <laughs> if you're too close. Oh, shit. But yeah. uh, it was kind of interesting to play. Although like my progress messed up and it didn't give me mission completion, so I was kind of salty about that last night. But yeah, that's uh, I don't, I don't know if they plan on. Uh, expanding on that and making it its own thing separate from operation uh, missions and like having a different game mode like that. It seems like that's where it's headed towards because that's a, it seems like that's a lot of effort to put into something that is yeah. only temporary for an operation. Yeah. But we'll see. But uh, other than those games, I have played the Division Beta this weekend, uh, which I did not like. It was very lackluster. Uh, the AI is completely garbage. Ubisoft <laughs> has no idea what they're doing when it comes to NPCs. All it, just the the dialogue is shit. The voice acting is annoying. Getting to the dark zone, you know, it takes over two hours, and apparently the dark zone is the meat and potatoes of the game. So why does it take me that long to go essentially through a tutorial and then get <laughs> to the actual game, which? 
does it really like I was watching a lot of people play in the dark zone and the the biggest problem that I have with it is the idea of players not necessarily being put into a PVP situation. So when you meet people in the dark zone, which if you're if you don't know is a place where you get special loot there's a currency that allows you to buy better loot. It's the best loot in the game comes from the dark zone. Doing the PVE there or killing uh, rogue agents, people who kill other players uh, uninitiated and then become marked and then you kill them and you get bonus points, experience, whatever. So what I would think that it should be is, is something along the lines of like a survival PVP game where you're always on the alert because everyone's your enemy, but that's not the case. Everyone is default, not your enemy, unless they shoot uh, at you. Okay. Yeah. And, it, and, and if you shoot at someone and you kill them and you become a rogue, then you're marked. You, you become like a player with a bounty on your head and people can fucking see you through walls like, and stuff. Oh, like and the old CS, like the it, old arms race, which it's, they it's really annoying from a perspective of yeah. like, well, if you wanted it to be PVP, like set it up to where there's a, a real goddamn threat and mm. and not just this silly thing where there there's a you get punished essentially for wanting to fight other players. It's really obnoxious. Mm. I don't I don't like the way that that's set up. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, just the fact that I had to go through so much gameplay to even get there, and it was really bad. And the audio optimization was terrible. Apparently, uh, someone someone was telling me it's bugged when you mess with the audio sliders in game because outside. My gunshots and stuff was was all normal, but when I got into mission places like inside of malls or whatever, the reverb amplifies the audio by like <laughs> five to ten times uh -oh. when you start shooting your gun, and it'll blast your ears out if you're not prepared for it. You're supposed to leave the sliders up at 100% on all of them and then use the Windows volume mixer in order to turn the uh -oh. volume down. Apparently, that's, the vo uh, that's the, a volume bug. I haven't tested it out myself. That's just what I was told. And if that's true, then listen. I, actually, that doesn't sound like a bug. That just sounds like good design. Two weeks from actually. release, I don't understand what their malfunction is and why they can't just release a game that at least works on a surface level. Ubisoft yeah. is so fucking incompetent with all of their major studios. I don't get it. No, nothing. It's like Rainbow Six Siege is the only thing that they've managed to do right. And was Rainbow Six Siege? It was. It was developed by a Ubisoft company right it wasn't just published yeah, by. i don't know if that was right. yeah yeah i think so, so I, I i mean the fact that they actually released that game and it, and it worked out i'm i'm very surprised because holy shit the division is just oh boy it, it is not on par <laughs> it's not on par people have been telling me to get it and everything i've i mean again you're just confirming a lot of what i've watched and thought i don't know i might give it a try at some point but i i mm. Anyway, I, I, I feel like everything I've seen on these games, like from Ubisoft, they've been yeah. pumping money into these games, hyping them up. And then like when people actually get around to playing these, they're like, yeah. you know, it's it's OK. It's kind of broken, you know, like is <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but like yeah, that's true. all of you. I mean, I don't I've I don't. Seen yeah, Scott, I don't know streamers. if you saw the video I made, but I mm -hmm. on multiple occasions broke yeah. PVE characters and made them stand still and not shoot at me. Yeah, no, uh, I saw it, more yeah. than once. Yeah. I, I. Yeah. I, if I can, if I can uh, get most of the bugs on my own playthrough in two hours, how can you not like have fixed some of these issues already? Right. Because right. it obviously wouldn't take that much QA testing if I ran into that many problems on my own playthrough yeah, that, as a, as a single person. Right. I don't know. There's just no excuse <laughs> for the, the <laughs> garbage anymore. Yeah, I hear. I just hear. I just hear Ubisoft, and my eyes just straight up glaze over. I, I'm not gonna lie. Like so many titles, like. Even Far Cry uh, 4, which I never touched because that had the Ubisoft label on it. And I was like, I don't, <laughs> you I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't care. Yeah, I'm like, I don't care. I'm <laughs> sure the game's probably good. I know they're publishing, but I do it. I don't care. But um, okay. Uh, sounds good. Brandon, what about you? Did you get a chance to play anything uh, this week or um, I just, just play the slopes? Well, I did do that. Uh, but <laughs> earlier in the week, I, I just played Overwatch and still still really enjoying Overwatch. I just wish they'd yeah. invite more people so that I can play with people. I've to play that so bad. Yeah, I mean, I it's, I don't know, I just don't know why they're holding back invites. Like, I, I, I really want to play with people, but the only mm. thing holding me back from playing more is that, like, a lot of people just don't have it. So, mm. hopefully soon. 
Okay. <laughs> and I've been playing about. I mean, I've been playing Hearthstone as normal. I'm I'm looking yeah. forward to. I, did we talk about them move them the new uh, standard mode they're gonna release? I don't know if you guys mm. did talk about I that. I don't know if we talked about that. I don't yeah. remember that. I don't think we did. But no. uh, I mean, no. was, I, I'm kind of looking forward to that um, because it'll it'll give me a chance to finally like disenchant a bunch of extra cards. I have a ton of cards. I have not disenchanted anything for probably a year or so. Mm -hmm. So like mm -hmm. I just have a whole bunch of cards just waiting to be disenchanted. So I'm hoping that when they release standard that they will change a bunch of cards because they'll sort of be out of the the standard pool and will just be wild. And I'm hoping yeah. they change those cards so then I can just disenchant a whole bunch of them and have uh, and have a bunch of dust waiting to craft all the new sets. That's my uh that's my wish. <laughs> all right. Um all right. Well, let's get into um we've got we don't have a ton of news items uh, this week, but we've got some pretty pretty big ones. Um, you know, just like uh, the the future of encryption and the U.S. government. You know, just small things that happened this week in the news. Oh yeah. <laughs> and so we gotta we gotta touch on this. So I, I'm sure, unless you're living under a rock, uh, which I don't think anyone here is, you saw the open letter uh, from Apple uh, about the situation going on uh, with the FBI, basically asking them to make a, a backdoor or a, another version of their operating system that allows them to to basically decrypt and take a look at a locked iPhone's uh, data. And um, so that was a big story, and I thought we should talk about it because, um, you know, it's not necessarily gaming-related, but it is, it is tech-related, and it is something that uh, I feel like breeds a lot. Okay, I'm just going to say, I'm just going to say, I, I think our, a lot of our takes are probably going to be pretty similar. Um, and if you're not familiar with the background with this, in case, again, you are living under a rock, basically what happened was um, Apple has opposed, uh, opposed an order from the United States government, this was on Wednesday, this was on February 17th, to create a version of the iPhone operating system that circumvents uh, several, this is in quotes, several important security features and installs it on iPhones recovered during investigations. So, uh, Tim Cook... This, this, is, this is specifically for the yeah. San Bernardino yes. killer. This is his... His yes, like his work iPhone. iPhone exactly that they want to decrypt, and I think exactly. they want to basically uh, get rid of the um, the feature that erases the phone after ten bad passcodes, right. and they want to remove the limit on entering passcodes. So like they want to be able to brute force the passcode on this particular phone exactly. to see what's on it, right. In the name, again, of trying to continue to, to work on this case and right, fight terrorism, right, I understand. And so uh, in the open letter, they made it very clear, obviously, they're not, you know, Apple doesn't support terrorism. This is a terrible act and all this stuff. But the, the, the real issue is the precedent that this sets, right? So uh, if Apple, you know, and, and Tim Cook, and this is what he was saying, if Apple goes through with this and creates this, this version of the OS, like you said, that circumvents um, the, the data being deleted after 10 tries and stuff like that, um, how can we be sure, right? And, and the U.S. government is right now, the FBI is saying, you know, we're only going to use it in this case very specifically. But the whole issue is, right, the precedent that this sets for the future. And again, you know, I'm, again, you guys know me. I, we don't, and we don't really talk politics on this podcast, but I think it's pretty safe to say, especially with uh, Bre uh, Brad, we were talking about this, like, the, I don't know, the Snowden situation and the Hillary Clinton non-encrypted emails situation, right? And a lot of situations yeah. that happen where our government, at least the U.S. government, hasn't been exactly <laughs> the most trustworthy when it comes to uh, keeping data that's not supposed to be public uh, private, right? And the fact that, you know, uh, if this happens, the precedent that it sets, you're going to tell me that the U.S. government is not going to use this in any kind of t case that is you know, regarded as terrorism or whatever else. What kind of precedent does that set? So I don't know. What are your guys' takes on it? I'm going to start off with that kind of discussion. Where, where do you guys stand? I know I know most of people, like at, Google came out in support. Facebook came out in support of Apple. I think most of Silicon Valley and um, the tech world is kind of on, on board with the idea that this is the precedent that this sets. It's very dangerous. And also, we got to talk about what John McAfee. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. His his open letter is fucking unbelievable in regards to this. He basically um, is offering to for free to the U.S. government to um, get into this phone as a one time thing without having to make Apple create a backdoor because he works with the most talented hackers in the world and that they could do this. And he said he will eat. If he cannot, if he is given this task and allowed to do this uh, in his article, he says that 
if he cannot do it, he will eat his own shoe on the uh, some guy's show on Fox News. I think the Cavito show. <laughs> he will eat his own sneakers <laughs> if, if he cannot uh, actually decode or, uh, you know, unencrypt this iPhone for, for the government. So he's pretty confident. Um, but anyway, yeah, what are you guys thoughts when you saw this uh, brewing to the surface? Anybody? I, I mean, it's one of those things that uh, I, I feel like the government is sort of using it as as a stepping stone to 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 kind of break the the encryption argument. Like ultimately, the government and police forces would love some sort of like easy backdoor. This is like a it's been yeah. in, it's been in the news. It's been like a topic of debate absolutely uh, between kind of the tech companies and the government. And this feels like just kind of a the first salvo at at them mm-hmm. trying to get that. Uh, built in so that they have this kind of access to anyone's phone um, because yep. from what I can tell like the, this is just like it has everything written all over it it's like a save the children thing right like oh you don't want to <laughs> uh, yeah, unlock this iPhone yeah, you're, you're, you're what, do you support the, terrorists yeah. like right. that's that's the that's the kind that's of the rhetoric that you you would see getting thrown around 100%. when this is actually a very like a very nuanced argument that yeah. I feel like if you don't actually understand the technology it can be hard to talk about this in a in like a smart way, and I feel like that's always the the hard part with politicians. Like very few politicians actually understand how technology works, and so like s- saying a backdoor to in this technology is like an easy thing, but actually creating a backdoor is 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 not it's not something that you can do, uh, and then like only the government has access. Like once it's out there in the wild, anyone will have access. Right. Bad yeah, guys, exactly. good guys, bad actors, like everyone will have access to this. It will yeah. get out in some way. And this does feel like just the first like the first kind of shot over the wall at the government yes. trying to break down like encryption from kind of from a law perspective. Yeah. I agree. I agree with that too. And again, again I know people have different opinions on it, but also for me where a lot of uh again, and I don't agree like on the other side, right? It's like, uh, like you're saying with the rhetoric, right? Like, well, do you support terrorists then? Like, you're saying yeah. that, and and it's like, no. And also the idea, this is the other really common uh, fallacy out there. It's like, well, uh, dude, w- w- if you got nothing to hide, then what are you concerned about? And it's like, that's right. not the fucking point <laughs> at all. You fucking idiot. It's not about having something to hide. It's about the precedent that it sets, and especially putting that much power. And it's these same people again. I'm gonna go on a little bit of a rant now, but I, it's the same people that will say like, okay, and, and whether it's conservative or liberal but like this idea that like man the government's really broken and they love to harp on the government and not trust the government right for all kinds of things and then as soon as the word terrorism gets gets brought into the equation right yeah. it's like yeah just check every yeah oh okay in that case everything's everything's off the table you know what you do anything you need to do that is invasive to to keep me protected and i'm not saying that i respect like there's a lot that goes into uh, anti-terrorism fighting and all that kind of stuff. It has nothing to do with that. But it's the idea that people aren't seeing that it's the precedent that it sense and that that could absolutely, like you're saying, Brandon, be so abused. And like you're saying, not only abused by the government, again, uh, I'm not I'm not exactly, I'm not the most trustworthy of, of, of the government. And I don't think, I think if you just look at the way uh, the US government has handled a lot of things in, in, in the not so recent past, you, you know, I think you should be skeptical of government. And the fact that, um, I, that, that, like it's 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 definitely the precedent, and it's not about. Well, they can already like the thing is the government can already access anything you store on a server anywhere. So yeah. like if you if you're suspected of a crime or if you commit a crime, all they need is a warrant, and they can go get exactly. your Gmail, they can get exactly. your Dropbox, they can get your iCloud, they can get everything that's stored on servers, but they exactly. cannot get at like if you have encrypted your personal hard drive, they can't get into it. Like I mean, assuming you encrypted it with a you know, with right. something strong, they sure. can't get into your phone because of the encryption built into the phone. Like there are so few places in technology that the government can't already get to that it feels right. like it's like really you it's need just another. this too. It's another like one. you can get to every you can get to another everything. One. Like anyone not using some sort of cloud service is like mm-hmm. really really adamant about the government not seeing what they do. Right, yeah. right, that's true. I mean, my biggest problem with it is like the the discussion of getting into an encrypted phone, you know, piggybacking, right. piggybacking itself off of something like the San Bernardino shooting. It's like, right. br- bring it from a clear perspective. Because if you're not, then you look like you're just trying to throw out a horrific yeah. narrative <laughs> and just use that to your advantage. And you look like a jackass. And no one's going to want to have a rational discussion about 
oh yeah, yeah, I mean, what what if X happens and there's something on an encrypted hard drive or a phone? What should we do about that? It's like take it out of the context of things that have actually happened and stop using it as yeah. a weapon to to help yourself in that situation. That's the frustrating put thing. Put fear like, into people. It's fucking yeah. annoying. This yeah. this particular case, it was. Yeah. He already like burned his personal phones. This the San Bernardino killer. This is his work issued iPhone. Yeah. That like clearly doesn't have anything useful on it. Like why would he? Why would he write? Like why would he? If he store destroyed stuff everything else work and didn't. Yeah, yeah. And so like if the government loses on appeal, they don't actually probably don't care because like I don't think this actually affects the case at hand. But they're using like it feels like they're using this because politically. This is like a terrorist right. thing, right? You can like wrap it in the terrorist, save the children rhetoric, and yep. maybe get through this thing that you really want to make your life easier on all of these other crimes. Yeah, they're using it as a means to an end. You know, For like sure. they're 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 riding this out to, like, like you said, they don't need this. You know, the, but right. but other phones out there, they could need quote unquote need those, but they're yeah. they're using this and writing this out. Yeah, I, I just think. Let's just get a pound of coke over to John Mc, Mc, McAfee <laughs> and uh, let's, yeah, Mc, Mc, and let, <laughs> let's and let's let's get let's the, let him do it, dude. Let's yeah, go let's to Barnes and Noble, get him a V yeah. for Vendetta mask. Let him fucking join Anonymous <laughs> I, and just start a rampage. Exactly. exactly. I gotta read. <laughs> Listen to this. I gotta read. This is the this is the best. Oh, it's I so read good. these two paragraphs. His whole his whole um article or his whole open letter to the FBI is fantastic in the government. But I'll just read a little bit of it. It says, "With all due respect to Tim Cook and Apple, I work with a team of the best hackers on the planet. These hackers attend DEF CON in Las Vegas, and they are legends in their local hacking groups, <laughs> such as Hack Miami. They are all prodigies." <laughs> with talents that defy normal human comprehension. He's bringing it. <laughs> About 75% are social engineers. The remainder are hardcore coders. I would eat my shoe on the Neil Cavuto show if we could not break the encryption on the San Bernardino phone. This is a pure and simple fact. That, he's, that he's, excerpt... Going, that yeah. excerpt sounds like a copy paste that you would see yeah, on Reddit or something, that. like the Navy SEALs copy <laughs> exactly that's what, what it sounds, sounds like. like. <laughs> I'm sure he was really coked up when he wrote it, but he's feeling it. With so, talents and, that defy normal human <laughs> comprehension. <laughs> dude, John Mack, he's made for Twitch, dude. Maybe he's making all these Twitch spams that we've seen. It would make sense. Uh, so then the last part, or the second part, he says, and why do the best hackers on the planet not work for the FBI? This is where he really goes in. Because the FBI will not hire anyone with 24-inch purple mohawk, 10-gauge ear piercings, and a tattooed face who demands to smoke weed while working and won't work for less than half a million dollars a year. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. But you bet your ass that the Chinese and Russians are hiring similar people with similar demands and have been for many years. It's why we are decades behind in the cyber race. So again, he, he makes some pretty... I mean, so he's basically just challenging and saying, give us the phone. We will do this as a one-off basis where there's no backdoor created. I think it's a pretty, I mean, again, it's just good marketing. And, I mean, you know, as ridiculous I'm, as like his rhetoric is, yeah, it's like, I, it's not stupid. It's no, like, it's there, not. Are pe- there are people out there that potentially could or maybe already have like hacked this security on, on the older iPhones. But instead, they're like, they're going to Apple as if there's not some other method to like hack this particular phone. Right. Right. Exactly. Like yeah. it definitely and feels very calculated on, on the government's part. Absolutely. And his and his old um <laughs> Oh my god, the last even the last part is so Twitch spam. He says <laughs> If you doubt my credentials, <laughs> which already Google cybersecurity <laughs> legend and see whose name <laughs> look up the, the only images. name that appears in the first ten results w- out of more than a quarter of a million, like <laughs> I'm gonna start stealing that for Twitch. <laughs> look at that voice it's in the chat. Oh my god, John McAfee is—he's a fucking memeer, but um. um I love the fact he that he points. like opened this article with like he's running for president, <laughs> like yeah, as a member did. of a libertarian party. Like this totally convinced me to vote for you, man. Like, I'll vote for John. Yeah. Judging the current landscape, dude, he's number one right now for me. I'm gonna vote after this article. Oh, okay. It's pretty good. I bet um, he has a lot of John like, McAfee could run for president and not be the most ridiculous candidate. No, it's a hundred percent. I bet he has a bunch true. of katanas and shit like hanging on his wall. He's one of those <laughs> one of those warrior dudes that just like has a even bunch the of ninja weaponry. <laughs> Even the photo for this in the article, like that's the best photo that he just looks like he's like had enough in the photo. And I don't I had enough coke, had enough of the government trying to intrude on our privacy. I don't know what. <laughs> but I just linked it in the chat. But um anyway, you should read the 
even though there's some funny parts in the article, his overall th- thing is just talking about it's exactly what we've been talking about about um, there are the other fact ways to that do this. There's other ways to do this, and you know, he's talking about the FBI in a laughable and bizarre twist of logic. Said the back door would only be used once for the San Bernardino case, and just saying again, he's talking about the precedent that it sets, and it's so f- fucking dangerous, basically, to to have this uh, be the first. You know, it's going to be the first of many if this happens. So. Um, Anyway, so yeah, big story. Uh, a lot to talk about. Any Katie's end? Did you have anything to add that you wanted to add, or uh, are you on par? What do you think? All I want to know is how can how can you eat that much shoe? <laughs> <laughs> how how big? Of, what is the shoe size? Yeah, what kind of yeah, shoe is know. it? Like I don't know. Size thirteen. You know. I mean, just it would be interesting, even for the FBI just alone, which I know they'll they probably won't do it, but just. In the in the possibility that he can't, you know, put a timeline, give him three weeks, and then you know what, he might be eating a shoe on the uh, on the Kabuto show. So it could be entertaining. <laughs> this um, picture in chat of, of Sean McAfee, dude, that, that was just it's, put in. Oh my god! With the <laughs> <laughs> that's right, the bath salts when he did that was when he did that YouTube video. That guy I was going to say, yeah, that guy, yeah. that guy's ridiculous. That guy's a nut. So, um, alrighty, so. That was the the news uh, in regards to Apple and um, that security. That story factor. probably isn't over either. That's sort of like that's no. where I'm going. I'm sure we'll talk about it again, depending on on where it goes. So, uh, in a little bit of a shift from that news, uh, an embargo was broken, and we know uh, the price of the HTC Vibe now. I'm sorry, not Vibe, Vive, uh, and that is come. It's going to be coming in at seven hundred and ninety nine dollars. And I believe Brad, there was a poll that KB Mod put out on their Twitter right when this yeah. hit about um you know are, are you guys interested at that price point are you going to buy it and i think if i'm not mistaken on the results almost everybody said they're out now yeah so but i now. asked um you know were you willing to buy it were you going to wait or is it just straight up no um 72% of people said no you know just straight up no yeah. uh about a quarter almost a quarter said you know i'm going to wait it out and then uh 4% said you know uh, I'm I'm willing to put money down on this right now, like basically, you know. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, eight hundred dollars. I mean, the clear difference is that the Vive setup is is uh, that that package is set up for the the whole f- like room setup to where you're not sitting down and you have this space that's defined by cameras right. or whatever. Uh, so I can see why it's more expensive. It's probably more of a question of are you wanting to do VR where you're up. And you have a room that is big enough to handle uh, having a walking space that you can interact in, or do you want something that's just sitting down? Well, and I maybe think, the Oculus Rift is more your your speed. I don't know. But well, I, I think yeah. part of it is I don't think it's restricted. So I think with the Vive you could sit down, right? Yeah. No. No. <laughs> yeah. That's not. Yeah. It it is to where you can sit down. It's just that the, where, the package where you're spending eight hundred bucks, you're you're getting these motion controls right. and the setup right. to be able to stand in a room and have that defined space where you can interact in. So it's it's that the Oculus doesn't have that in a package straight up. That's the difference between the two, and that's why it probably costs more. Yeah, you got you got two motion. So this is included. You get two controllers, which I think the mm-hmm. Rift doesn't include. Um, mm-hmm. Two, I think it's two or four cameras for like your room, and then then the the Vive, which has um, a microphone, a camera, and then um, I don't know if it has more or less sensors or how how even that works in comparison to Rift. Um, and then I've heard some people say that. Um, some people like the comfort of the Vive better than, you know, over the Rift. I don't know. But but I think you get kind of more bang for your buck going for the Vive, but you're still having to whip out 800 bucks, you know? Yeah, I think for the person yeah. who really wants to get into VR might want to go with the Vive with this kind of package where they, like, because, I mean, I've watched videos of the, you know, the the room space set up, and it mm-hmm. looks really fucking interesting to to play a game like that. I, I think the biggest video was, like, the, the lightsaber uh, prototype thing where someone was, um, you know, uh, blocking lasers from that little droid that's flying around. Oh and, yeah, really and they and that. they were in the space yeah. where they were walking around. Uh, that's yeah. kind of interesting. I mean, I don't really have a place set up for that, so it's not going to be on my radar anytime soon. Right. But I don't yeah. know who who knows in the future if I would want to try it. Um, I like the Vive technology. I just mm-hmm. one eight hundred dollars is quite expensive. Like I think. Yeah. I, I don't know. A lot of people are talking about VR. I feel like a lot 
a lot of those people are just not even going to buy the early versions, and they probably I don't, shouldn't. I don't think people should. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's yeah. it's hard to tell how the landscape is going to be in terms of software, and that that's where the real that's, that's question the thing, comes yeah. in. Yeah, like is I mean, what kind of games are going to be being made for it? Yeah, maybe wait a year and, and see what kind of things people are are releasing for the thing. The other thing is. Like I, I could, I guess I could see if you wanted to buy the one that was more all encompassing because like you can use it without the, the room scale piece. You can mm -hmm. just use it sitting down, but who, like who honestly has the, has the room for a vibe in their house? <laughs> well, I mean, if yeah. I, if I move chairs and stuff around, I would have like a, a, a five by eight, five by nine space or something. And, and, and it, you know, it conforms itself to the room that you're in. It's not like you have exactly. to have yeah. this X much space. You just have to have enough <laughs> to be able to walk around in. But I can see a lot of people are probably in more cramped rooms, so it's not going to be up their alley. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm definitely, uh, even when it came to uh, either of these, the Vive or the Oculus, like I'm not going to be adopting until like there are confirmed great apps that um, <clears throat> cater to certain needs of the human <laughs> nature. So uh, once those are in place, you'll, I'll, probably, uh, I'll probably pick one up. But, Scott will not be uh, streaming anymore. He will be stuck <laughs> in a virtual world. In a virtual world <laughs> for the rest of my life. Well, I mean, probably. like, I, I, I know you're, well, you're not. I'm joking. kind of kidding, but you're, no, but I would. But, but I, like more generally, we don't know what will support the Vive versus yeah. what will support the Rift versus like if people are going to support both. Like we, we, it's a big open question of what was what will actually be available for these headsets aside from the tech demos that we've seen already. Yeah, no, you're right. You're absolutely right. Like, I, it's just there's not enough there's not enough information on what kind of like games and apps and stuff are going to be out there. I mean, what what is the one that ships with the Vive? It's like Job uh, it's Simulator, or Job ship? Simulator, and Fantastic Contraption. So it just it only ships with two VR experiences, which is, I, I mean. mean I, I can understand only two, but it seems like it's not that much to uh, unless they're you know it, it does say that they're fully fledged, so maybe they do represent yeah. the capabilities of VR very well and their and their well done VR experiences. So I mean that's that's up in the air. I, I haven't seen anything from them. So yeah, I don't know. I, if you, um, oh, go sorry. ahead, sorry, Brad. Nope, go ahead. Did you guys see? So Mark Zuckerberg showed up at a Samsung event today, and they took pictures of. <laughs> like all the people trying out VR and then Mark Zuckerberg like in front of all of them. It yes. Super eerie and creepy. It is like, really terrifying. If we can find that, like, did you link it? In oh, chat? I wish I wish I could find it. I was trying to yeah. look for it. Um, I just saw it on Facebook actually or Twitter or something like that. Someone linked it. I got to find it. But yeah, it is something out of a fucking dystopian <laughs> future or something. It's it's scary. Let's see. It is. It's, it's super weird. He's the only one up there. The lights on him and everyone else is in this like blue tone light with just like goggles on their heads sitting back like i don't know <laughs> it's hundreds of people too it is oh, it's super front page weird. of reddit okay that's where i saw it then i actually got it right now yeah scott's an avid redditor so I'm sorry i'm an, <laughs> i'm not a redditor stop brad i'm not okay <laughs> don't call me that here we go i just browse it, our counter-strike every, every and the, the look on yeah the look on his face too <laughs> oh my god that <laughs> picture is so good <laughs> <laughs> isn't it weird though i mean just and that one guy <laughs> guy is right there, like he's actually typing as he's looking at fucking VR. Like, yeah. what what's that guy doing? Anyways, that guy has an incredible sad. frown, like default frown yeah. face. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a Dark Souls character. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, kind of is. Holy crap! But but yeah, I just thought that was interesting. Uh, yeah, it definitely is. Um, all right, so let's talk a little bit about Call of Duty. And before you turn off the podcast. Um, you know, uh, we've, I think we've been saying this for years. I think anyone with common sense has been saying this for years. When will Call of Duty sell the multiplayer separate from the single player experience? Because most people don't care about the single player experience. Well, now, at least on PC, you can do that. Uh, albeit there's a few caveats to that. It's limited not limited time. <laughs> yeah, it's limited. And also yeah. your version of the game, as far as like being able to prestige or playing custom games with this version of the game is not allowed. So you can, this is a, this is a, I guess this is um, a UK article. I don't know what it actually is exactly in It's US. $15. It's, it's 15? 15. Okay. Yeah. So uh, yeah, so you can get it for the Black Ops multi 3 multiplayer starter pack is, is $15 and you can get access to the multiplayer mode of the game only. Um, and like I said, so 
you you can play in ranked matches, but there's no prestige, there's no custom games, and then campaign and zombie obviously are off limits, which would make sense because they're only selling the multiplayer. Um, but you can purchase the full version of the game, and then if you have the starter pack, whatever you pay for that will be deducted from the full price, and then any progress you made will actually cal- carry over too if you if you wanted to prestige, I guess, at, at some point. So I think it makes a lot of sense, um, and that's this is definitely more of a price point. I think they're trying. I think they're trying to test the idea yeah. of it with the way yeah. that this is implemented because yeah. one it's time limited until the 29th of this month so it's a very short two week time span that they were even allowing this to happen and then yeah. also with certain things being cut off like you were saying with the prestiges and whatnot not being available to people until right. they buy the full game i think they just want to gauge how many new players they might get just off of the idea that hey we can play multiplayer for 15 bucks and and yeah. maybe if they actually did it straight up? Maybe it would be about twenty instead of fifteen. Yeah, someone they was were actually going to just why not do, sell all multiplayer for yeah. thirty with everything unlocked? Yeah, I mean, even exactly. that might be more. I, like, I, I really just think it's a test, and I and I never looked at the numbers to see how much like Call of Duty's population has spiked on like Steam mm-hmm. charts over the past couple of weeks. I should look yeah. at that. Well, I'll tell you right now, on PC, it is horrible. Like, yeah, what's there's only there's only yeah. two game modes you can play. I'm not even joking. Like, oh yeah, there's TV, no other done. lobbies. Yeah. Um, no, it's actually TDM and free for all. Like oh, every oh, other man. game I mode, TDM personally. It's it's yeah, it's, it's dead and stuff. Yeah, okay. yeah I'm I'm looking Still at Steam charts. I'm looking at Steam charts, and there is it, there's no noticeable change mm. in the past week to the player base. It's got the same uh, about a, a twenty four thousand person peak uh, dur- during the day with an average of about thirteen thousand players in the last month. <laughs> Uh, yeah, thousand for a title. Totally. I mean, I know it's a prominent, predominantly console, you know, driven yeah. title, but still, that's pretty insane when you consider the PC populace. And I know, like, yeah. Counter Strike and shit's killing it right now, but you would think it would it would stay at least a little bit. Like, what is that in comparison to like some like um fucking what's the other Battlefield uh, spinoff that's essentially dead online? Hardline. Hardline. Like, I'm curious what what the numbers would be like <laughs> comparing <laughs> those two, like oh, yeah. Black Ops two or three and uh, Hardline, but. Yeah, the, I, I agree. I, that makes sense, Sham. I think they're probably testing to see if it'll make any difference. Yeah, I mean, it seems it, there's like no there's no downside to getting this because yeah. if you if you decide you want to upgrade, they you you just pay the difference between that and the full version, and your yeah. progress carries over to the full version. So it seems like maybe they're testing. I mean, it, not free to play, but like sort of getting closer to that. Like I, I I look at this kind of the way that WoW uh, allows you to play to like level twenty, mm-hmm. but there's yeah. a lot of restrictions on your account. Like you can play to level twenty for free, but you can't get mail. You can't get all sorts of things. Like it's a very limited experience that's sort of just trying to hook you and get you interested. Yeah. And like the second you you cap out at twenty, like you probably want to spend fifteen dollars, you know, and get your and and keep playing your character. This feels like maybe the same thing, but um, I mean. I think it seems like a decent deal. Like just the basic online only for fifteen bucks is probably yeah. not that bad. Uh, if they did that at launch, I think it would have been really popular. The fact that it's like February, the game launched what three yeah. months ago. Like I think people that have bought Call of Duty, especially on PC, I think people that have that want to play Call of Duty already bought it because they know that there's a shelf life on right. each Call of Duty game. So it doesn't surprise me that like their players wouldn't have jumped at all because this like. Who who's gonna buy Call of Duty now? No one. Yeah, they're gonna wait for well, the next I, one. I feel like a lot of them are still playing even the older Call of Duties. Like Modern Warfare Two still has a crazy like big online community, even though it's like ridden with like people that hack and other things like that. But I mean, I think honestly, if you're playing on PC, like a majority of people are just still playing Modern Warfare. Modern Warfare. Yeah, I would have. I would have. Yeah. St- yeah. I would have kept playing Modern Warfare Two if they didn't cease and desist the the dedicated <laughs> server uh, uh-huh. mod community. Like yep. that. That yep. was what got me back into it. Was that the servers didn't fucking suck, and <laughs> there were dedicated well, like, servers going on. I think. I honestly think that what will happen. This is just my prediction, but I think that Activision will change Call of Duty to mm-hmm. be instead of releasing like one each year. They, the subscription? they will turn Call of Duty into a kind of free to play style mm. game where Keeping like the where engine. they will have like a new story or whatever that you can mm. buy for 30 or 40 bucks each time. 
Um, but like I think what and I think what they need for it to thrive as a competitive title and stuff is to is to be like CS:GO and League of Legends and games that just sure. continue to evolve over time. Mm -hmm. And you have other, you have things you can pay for to keep you know financing the development of the game, but I think that they're they're realizing that the cash cow on releasing a full sixty dollar game each year I think is running out. Like Call of Duty numbers aren't going up anymore. Mm. Yeah, it's yeah. a good point. So yeah. that's what it feels like. That sort of test to me, like the just one test to say like, what if we just had a part of the game for fifteen bucks? What would that look like? Call Call yeah, of Duty's yeah. they're they're gonna they're gonna revolutionize the the way that games are released by breaking off the single player and the multiplayer. <laughs> and the multiplayer is going to be free to play with microtransactions, oh, and then shit. the single player is going to be episodic. Dude, that and is every, everyone's gonna eat I it up. It. But, but like, here's the thing: I actually think. Tell me, you wouldn't play Call of Duty more if there was just one version of Call of Duty? Like Hutch said, right now yeah. the Call of Duty community is split across like. COD 4, Modern yeah. Warfare 2, probably Black Ops, probably Black Ops 2, and like, I don't know, some others others sprinkled in there. And like now, and now Black Ops 3. I mean, it depends because I, I don't know. I don't see Call of Duty as one of those games where the skill ceiling has such a high reach that a lot of the enjoyment of the game comes from personal improvement, like Counter-Strike or Rocket League or anything like that. It doesn't live off of people playing for hours and hours, dedicating themselves to learning the game and getting better at it and, and having a better mental capacity for the game. Mm -hmm. Call of Duty is about running people over with a fucking bulldozer and then dropping a nuke on those run over bodies <laughs> in the it form is, of a yeah. kill streak. Like that, that's I mean, yeah. what it's about. And, it, and it's, about wrecking. it's like with sense. each yearly release, they kind of change up what kind How of kill streaks you can use and the kind yeah. of guns. And that's where the freshness comes from for Call of Duty. I yeah. wish that they would. I, 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 I would they, be. I think they could still do that. Like I yeah. think they could do those radical changes each year. Yeah, they could. The no, you basically right. yeah. don't allow people to play the old version of the game. Yeah. Right. Like League of Legends may not change quite that dramatically each year, but they change a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. And like the game in 2016 is very, very different than the game was in 2009. Mm -hmm. So like mm -hmm. I think that's where they have to go to stay relevant if they want to. Like they, they clearly want Call of Duty to be like a platform, the way that other games are now platforms, like hugely popular. Yeah, I can understand that. Call and of I, Duty I, has always been playing second fiddle to these games. Like where Call of Duty had a huge head start, it's now like completely languished. Where it's like a top ten game, but not. It's not mm -hmm. the first game you think of when you think of like professional players and like the professional players. I think are kind of like lucky that Call of Duty was around so early. Because you're right, mm -hmm. the skill ceiling's not there. There are more skillful yeah. games, and I think the pro players probably know that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, that was I, really funny. Speaking of pro players knowing that, it's because when FaZe picked <laughs> up a uh, CSGO team, all the FaZe... <laughs> they did like a welcome in the CSGO team and it was like so all the phase guys on the Call of Duty team were like what's your favorite game to play right now and everyone was like Counter-Strike it's just the skill ceiling so high <laughs> all the phase <laughs> players were saying again not necessarily shitting on their own game but even I agreed like and that that is a huge I think that is a, a huge deal and honestly the reason that when you look at Counter-Strike part of the reason the game is growing so fast and has continued to grow is because the competitive side of again like and that was the problem with Counter-Strike for years right you had Source come out uh, the community was split. I don't even know it was half. I'd say maybe like a quarter of the community stuck with Source. And then maybe like three quarters of the community stayed with uh, 1.6. And then, you know, the great power of Counter-Strike Source was that, or I'm sorry, Counter-Strike Go, even though it was a terrible game at the beginning and there's still a lot of things that need to be worked on, it, it, it brought both of those worlds together. And I, I agree, Brandon. I think, yeah, I think that's the it, thing would, like, it would go a long way for Call of Duty if Valve they could put out something people, that people Valve didn't would. give people the choice to no. skip Counter-Strike yeah. Global Offensive. Yeah. No, they it's didn't. just like you're, you're just basically resigned to history if you don't play the new game because that's now the game that, that will, be, like, will be around for, for the foreseeable future. Right. And I right. think that's what Call of Duty, like, that's where it misses is that if they have one bad year, then like everyone's like, well, we'll just play the old version, I guess. And I think I think right. Activision has to force people that like, well, here's the game for the next year. If you don't like it, then you right. just don't want to play Call of Duty. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I think it'll no. just come down if they're dedicated to building a game based on the idea that they're going to keep it for four, five, six years, right. you know, yeah. and and really build off of that. Because, you know, now they're on a three developer uh, run where they switch off each year and it's really convoluted just to keep the yearly releases coming and 
every uh, all of the studios do their own style of Call of Duty game, and they're kind of the same in the way that they feel, but there's so many sweeping differences. It's like if you get a Treyarch game, it's so much different from like the Sledgehammer version of Call of Duty. I don't, yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't know if they will consolidate in a sense and just chill the fuck out and try to re envision what they're trying to do with call of duty. If they, if they even care, I don't know if they feel like the way that they're going is still the way to keep going or if they're going to change. I mean, they still make a lot of money. Yeah, they do. Call of duty is still a huge, a huge franchise for consoles, especially it's just, it's massive on there. Yeah. But like, but the thing is that they, I think they have to, it's such a big franchise that they have like so many people to support that they have to keep killing it with releases. Like one bad year for Call of Duty is a mm-hmm. big deal to Activision, the company, because they rely so heavily on Call of Duty as an income stream. Right. Yeah. Definitely. It's- well, I mean, I, I I purchased the game uh, not quite for full price, but <laughs> a variance of it, and I still have don't have it installed on my PC. So Do you I, really it might be not? I enjoyed no, I it. Don't. I really I don't. did. I enjoyed Black Ops Three a lot. Yeah, I'm not I put, I put about game. thirty hours or so. I somewhere around thirty hours into the multiplayer, and I enjoyed every bit of it. I thought it was great. Yeah. Um, I mean, there you know, there's <laughs> it's Call of Duty, so you just go you go in there with low expectations, and you don't play the game in any other mindset other than this is just goofy brain dead shooting and that's what I'm going in there for and that's where my fun comes out of it. I don't mind paying for it every year as long as it right. executes on that Scratch basic that idea for me. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Okay. On a, on a side note, yeah, Black Ops 3 is weird. Like it's my first Black or Call of Duty since like Modern Warfare 2 or Black Ops 1 or something mm-hmm. and it's weird because you have everybody like jumping around. Like yeah, I, I I'm so. Call, I haven't played movement any of those is calls. so different. It is so different, and I'm so bad. It's not even <laughs> funny. But like, yeah, it's it's completely throwing me off. But it's it's actually really fun. So, um, I just wish the servers weren't dead. Anyways, sorry. No, no worries. Uh, all right, so we got some quick hits here to to uh, to do. Mark, I think maybe you'll be excited about this one. I don't know. Valve announces competitive plans for TF2. And they have launched a Steam group uh, for testers. So I, I, this has been, I remember this was discussed, uh, I think we discussed this on a couple of, pod, a couple of podcasts yeah. ago about the rumors that competitive was coming to Team Fortress 2. Um, but there's just been confirmation about that. And basically, um, from what it looks like, the way that it's going to work is that um, you basically go put into a, um, into a group or whatever. Like They're going to start with a small uh, group of participants and then the initial phase of testing uh, which will begin in about a week from when this was announced. I'm not sure what the date of that article is. But uh, gradually granting random members um, from the testing group uh, an in-game item called Competitive Matchmaking Beta Pass. And then once you've been granted that pass, you can get ongoing access. So I guess it's just selection like, I don't know, like mm-hmm. Overwatch or anything else kind of is how they're doing it. So I don't know. Does that excite you, Mark? Would you, will you play uh, competitive? I mean, it's been a while since TF2. I've actually played TF2, and yeah. I've I've never played TF2 from a standpoint where I like tried to improve at the game. I, I just I I always felt intimidated by the amount of weapons in the game, and I never yep. cared to learn stuff. I just kind of fucked around on a scout or a sniper. Those were the two classes that really just stuck with me, and sometimes soldier. And I would just you know go on to King of the Hill servers and and just kind of goof off for a little bit, and mostly play modded stuff. Um, like X10 or Randomizer and other game modes that people in the community have created. I would be interested in trying out uh, a more competitive version of TF2. I just don't know exactly what it's going to look like because I haven't kept up with all of the information about it. But I'll probably uh, try it out. I, I don't see yeah, any reason why I wouldn't. I was always. I really do enjoy the game. Yeah, I mean, I put fun. you know close to yeah. 200 hours into the game over the years. So I mean, I've obviously had some some good times there. Yeah. It just yeah, feels definitely. so late. That's what yeah, everyone does, yeah, is saying right now. It's the action. Yeah, it's way too it, late. It, honestly, it, feels, it yeah. feels reactionary to Overwatch in a way that Valve is usually mm-hmm. not reactionary like, yeah. to what competitors are doing. And yeah. I don't even know why. Like, I mean, CSGO has had matchmaking for a while now. And yeah. I don't know why it seems so obvious to put that into TF2. Mm-hmm. So like, I'm sure there's, a, there's probably a valid reason for why it wasn't already there. But it just feels so late. Like I, I think a lot of people are excited for Overwatch in a way that I don't think TF2 will excite them, because like the game is just it's pretty old by now. Like yes. if you're not already playing TF2, you're probably not going to play TF2. 
I well, but- I mean, I mean, people really like I've I've heard uh, differences from people who don't really compare Overwatch to TF2. They more they more say like Overwatch is kind of like an FPS version that is kind of like a MOBA in the way that abilities work and synergy uh, in the team works. So I, I I don't know if the the TF2 versus Overwatch uh, kind of community thing is really as big of a deal i i could be i, I wrong, think it's a but... real thing because like mm-hmm. you you look at the competitive players a lot of those competitive players from tf2 have moved to overwatch because yeah, like the yeah. writing is on the wall that overwatch will be like a popular competitive game they're yeah they're setting up for esports scene. yeah and like that's the thing is i think valve has kind of missed the boat on tf2 becoming a big esports game there's no reason it shouldn't be mm-hmm. right like the game is good enough to be but TF2 has just never had a big competitive community. And I think the people that are still playing it at a high level are probably switching to Overwatch because there's like there's a future with Overwatch where I don't right. know that there's a future with TF2. Yeah, it's hard to know yeah. until until things start to come out and, and like, give I don't, I don't think the roadmap. games are actually quite that similar, but yeah. they're similar enough that like people are gonna wanna watch the new team-based shooter, not the old team-based shooter. I mean, even then, I mean, Team Fortress lives on in its characterization as well. And that's what like gets me excited to play it again is just because I, I love the personalities of the the classes in the game. And I, you know, I haven't really had much experience with Overwatch. I only got to play one beta weekend. I mean, Blizzard is doing and, a pretty good job. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're kind of, they're, they're like, they basically took Valve's playbook and did it. Yeah, like Overwatch is doing the same kind of thing that they did with TF2, which is like creating personalities around all the characters and yeah, getting right. people to buy right. into like the lore of a shooter game, which is a really hard thing to do. Yep, and that and it, but it's a huge component to like keeping people interested because holy oh, fuck, do, do, yeah. do, does Left 4 Dead 2 and Portal and <laughs> TF2 live on its characters and and it mm-hmm. completely carries the game. And especially when you want to sell skins and other like other cosmetic yeah. items, you've got to get people bought into like having a favorite character. You know, having someone that like they want to have a really cool looking right. skin or loadout. Mm-hmm. Um, and like that's that's the thing is I think as as well as TF2 has done for Valve, especially with like the hats economy and all of that. Like TF2 has clearly been a success. I think there's there's a world in which TF2 has like CS:GO type. Uh, numbers just because you know it's a very different game and I think they could have had the success that I think Overwatch will have but I think the boat is maybe is maybe gone on on Valve really capitalizing on TF2 at this point well I I think that's apparent because the game's seriously almost 10 years old but the the thing is I think Valve is really stepping up like legitimately listening to the community where this has been a requested thing from the community for as long as I've even been gaming and Mm -hmm. like we've seen Valve just recently like in the last year listen to some like really obscure things and actually like implement it like what was it in the last CSGO update like they updated the image of the op because it didn't (laughs) reflect like yeah like like little the way that it looked yeah I mean something that bears no actual actual impact on gameplay yeah Yeah. Yeah, but But just because yeah. somebody commented on a thread or something, they actually listened to it. It was like, okay. Like, yeah. I mean, um, the way I understand how Valve works, like, I guess, I don't know if you guys have seen it, but I guess they posted online, like, a new employee handbook about, like, how Valve yeah. is structured and done and everything. Yeah. And it's just basically, like, work on what you want as long as you think the company's going to benefit from it and you want to you work on it, you know? So, yeah. um for all we know, it could be just somebody from the CSGO team was like, you know what, you know, the community wants this. Let's go over to TF2 and actually implement something, you know. Um, yeah. Not be- not because we think it's going to be huge in the esports scene, because it's not. Like, let's, let's yeah. be serious. But, yeah, yeah, I mean, to be clear, I'm, I'm really happy that Valve continues to support TF2 with things like this. I mean, like, right. they, they could just coast and, like, yeah. leave TF2 as it is, but they're not. I think that is very admirable. I'm just, I'm just saying that, like, I, I think there is a, there's a, an alternate, influence. like, yeah, I think that, yeah. I think that, like, this is influenced by the fact that I think there is a, there, there should be a real fear at Valve, like the TF2 team especially, that Overwatch just like kills the TF2 player base. I, I see that, yeah. I, I, and, I mean, that. like, TF2 is still, it, it has 41,000 players online. Peak today at 70, 79k, almost 80k. Like TF2's 
community, especially public community, is still big. But I think that's the thing is like there is a chance that those players move to a game like Overwatch because if, if like TF2 gets stale or if Overwatch really kills it. Mm hmm. Yeah. Definitely. Um, all right. Well, that's our first quick hit. Our second quick hit, uh, TwitchCon 2016. Save the date. It is here. It has been announced. Save it. Um, save it. Get your calendars marked for September 30th <laughs> through October 2nd. This is not a paid sponsorship. No, I know it sounds like it is, but it's really not. It's just a news article. I didn't even add uh, this article. I know. You didn't even add I did. This. I yeah, did, yeah. Brad did. Um, so, but anyway, so just uh, as a heads up, I really I didn't get a chance to go to the last TwitchCon, but I heard it was fantastic, and I really am um, going to be trying to go to this one. So I hope I'm going to be there. It's in San Diego, though. Uh, San Diego this yeah, time. New location. And that actually makes me want to go because that's a lot closer than driving to San Francisco. San Diego is only like two and a half hours away. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's I'm, a good I might go to this TwitchCon. Yeah. So um, I guess gonna there's really going to be more info announced, obviously, as it gets closer. But um, anyway, just September 30th through October 2nd, I'm assuming it's probably going to be even a lot bigger than it was last year. Just I yeah. attendance was good, but now more people know about it. And all of the info's gotten out that it was a real fun event. So yeah, San yep. Diego's I haven't actually been to San Diego for a convention before. So I, but I've heard it's like a really good convention location. Yeah. So I'm, I'm excited. The only the only reference I have is Comic Con, which I think is just fucking cancer, personally. But in San Diego, but in terms of like the, in terms of the, the size actual, and scope of that, no, event, the size though. and the actual. I like San Diego as a town. Everything is beautiful. Like I think yeah. it'll be perfect for TwitchCon, Comic Con. Anyway, I, I'm, <laughs> I've gone to Comic Con like three or four times in my life, and every time I was like, oh, "Fucking, I'm over this. This is the worst." Uh, this is just me personally. I know a lot of people like Comic Con. Don't hate me. Um, <laughs> All right, so we also have this is Katie Zen news right here. Dark Souls Three available to pre-purchase. Uh, it is out. Season Pass uh, has been confirmed. Katie yes. Zen, two DLC packs for twenty five dollars a piece. Your thoughts? Uh, I'm a bit concerned, to be honest. Okay. Because uh, so to give you an idea of how the, the development's been going for Dark Souls Three, uh, so the Soul series has been kind of doing like a yearly release, which is a bit worrying. Like especially when you consider like coming out right after Bloodborne, and it's been established that there's like a B team working on Dark Souls 2, which is why it didn't really live up to like Bloodborne, Dark Souls 1, Demon's Souls standards. And uh, we already know, before knowing anything about the DLC, <clears throat> that we're going to get DLC, so it's very... To me, it's very evident that it's being taken out of the game, or that the game's not finished, mm, and to get right. that yearly release, they're going to like do so DLC... So with the release of Dark Souls Two, was it um, was it DLC not announced until after like yeah post the DLC release? wasn't announced yeah the DLC wasn't announced until like after the game came out uh, and then Dark Souls Two by itself had like five different versions of the game that like came out like there were different versions of that game coming out like ending finally with like the Scholar of the First Sin on like the next gen almost like a year after it came out. They said initially there wasn't going to be any DLC, and they said, oh, it's not going to be on the next-gen consoles, and then both of those things were wrong, and then I don't know if you guys remember like the whole deal with like, the graphical downgrade. That could have been solved if they just uh -huh. put it on the next-gen consoles, but that's a whole different story. But uh, yeah, I'm just concerned that the... I know that the front man, Miyazaki, mm -hmm. the god, is going <laughs> to be heading Dark Souls 3, so that kind of... If it's uh, if the DLC is on par with uh, like Dark Souls One or Bloodborne's fantastic DLC, then mm -hmm. I'll be happy. But if it's would more you say, Dark Souls Katie level, Zen, you are approaching this with a cautious optimism? Cautious optimism <laughs> is okay. the absolutely perfect way to describe. Okay, what I'm I could just I, you were exuding cautious optimism, so I had yes. to grab it and <laughs> see if that's what it was. Yeah, um, that's yeah. that's what it is. Well, I've okay. never I've never heard of these Dark Souls games, but according to Steam <laughs> user defined <laughs> tags. Uh, it is a casual, action, family-friendly walking simulator. Oh, I flagged all of this. <laughs> That's awesome. Like, Trying to bait people into buying it uh, <laughs> and then getting destroyed. That's actually genius. Uh, um, all right. Yeah. If, I, if I was to um, want to uh, get back into Dark Souls 2 in order to play Dark Souls 3, mm -hmm. would you, re like, a Scholar of the First Sin, like a must-buy kind of thing to... So, with the with the changes that were there, have you played Dark Souls One? Uh, yeah, I've played Dark Souls One. Not, okay. I've never beaten it, but I've played it. Okay, how far did you get in Dark Souls Two? Dark Souls Two, I played about twenty five, thirty hours. So, okay, yeah, a few bosses uh, or so. 
I never beat it. Yeah, did you? Was it like good impressions, bad impressions? No, no, very good impressions. I liked okay, it. I just, okay. I just ended up not sticking with it, and I, uh, you know, just okay. got involved in other games. Yeah, I think uh, the changes that were made in the new version were really good. Like, it really took advantage of like the new hardware. It's not like if you didn't like Dark Souls two, like mm-hmm. it's not going to change anything. But yeah. if you thought it was really good, I definitely recommend it. It's okay. still, I still don't think it's going to be like. Uh, I don't know if you have a PS four, if you or if you've played uh, Bloodborne. Nope, haven't, and I want to, <laughs> but I don't. Oh, it's so good. Yep, that's all I keep hearing, and I want to buy one just to play Bloodborne on. <laughs> yeah, I recommend that. But yeah, Dark Souls Two, I I give it a lot of like, nah, but I, I still, it's a pretty great game. Like, mm-hmm. I think it'll, it's fun. Okay, but uh, yeah, I recommend uh, Scholar for a Sin if you definitely if you haven't played Dark Souls Two before to anyone who's like thinking about it. Yeah, but yeah. All right, and then uh, our final quick hit before we jump into new releases and then the questions. Uh, Forza Motorsport 6 and Gears of War are rumored, in all caps, bold, rumored, (laughs) to be coming to Windows 10 for all you Windows 10 fans who love buying games directly off the Windows 10 marketplace or whatever else. Um, (laughs) Which I assume, yeah, in the wind exclusive to the Windows Store. I didn't even have to open the article to know that that was coming. Um, So anyway, both, um, you know, I guess both potentially uh, Gears of War four. Um, I don't even. I'm so out of the Gears of War loop. Is Gears of War four is not. Is that out? I, I don't even. Has that been out? Gears of War four? Time? No, no, no. It's no. Uh, that's that. It's Gears of War three, right? Is the Gears, Gears of War, War Ultimate Edition is the Ultimate. one that that's what that one. was okay. released, and that that was a remastering right. of essentially the first Gears of War game, and okay. that uh, where they redid the multiplayer and stuff for that. And then they they gave people uh, Gears of War three and Gears of War Judgment as backwards compatible uh, add ons to buying Ultimate Edition. I get, but I think it was a pre order bonus actually. So uh, okay. it wasn't Gears of War three that was remastered. It was one, but it, it's very different from the first game. Uh, and like the mechanics on the surface level are like you'll know that you're playing Gears of War one compared to the other two. Yeah. But a lot of changes were made, and and the fact that it was sixty frames is like. So much of a difference compared because yeah, like Ge- Gears of War, man, that is a headache and a fucking half at its frame rate that it was on Xbox 360 with the way that the camera moved. So just that improvement alone. But even Ultimate Edition is not on PC yet. And I don't think yeah. that they've said anything recently about it being released on PC, even though it was confirmed by Rod Ferguson that it would come to PC. Mm. But yeah, yeah, I don't know. That's what I was waiting for because I played it. I, I played uh, Ultimate Edition on Xbox One, and I'm like, God, I, I really do love this game, but I don't like hooking up my Xbox all the time to <laughs> yeah. fucking play one video game. Just bring it yeah. to the PC, and I'll play it there. But been waiting forever. Gotcha. I think this all is right. the kind of thing they'll have to do if they want Windows Store to be, like, yeah, like a contender at all. Yeah, anything. Yeah. I think. I mean, sure. and I I don't feel as bad about this as I do about like, you know. EA taking all their stuff off Steam and putting it on Origin mm-hmm. back yeah. in the day, or like you know Ubisoft putting stuff on UPlay, because these are games that traditionally haven't even come out on PC. So like I I would be okay with them being exclusive to the Windows Store. I don't love it, but it's better than them not coming to PC at all. And it feels like that's one thing that Microsoft could do is like put your good properties that are only on console, like the yeah. next version, develop those for PC. That's the way you show like PC gamers that you actually care about PC as a platform is you stop doing console exclusive games. Yeah. I, I just mean, I, I, yeah, go ahead. I Beth. just got triggered by the <laughs> like seriously remembering um, games for Windows Live and then the oh, yeah. garbage support. Mm. Oh yeah. Um, like my Windows or my GTA like 3 or whatever still isn't like officially activated. <laughs> Even though, like, I don't, it's super garbage. I bought it on Steam. The yeah. code they gave me didn't work. I contact Steam. They tell me contact Go Windows, to, right. you know, game for Windows Live. Contact games for Windows Live. They're like, sorry, talk to Steam. And so, like, <laughs> um, it, God, it basically so came down to, like, um, Windows games for Windows Live telling me, like, I could buy it again. Like, that's what they <laughs> that told was me. Support. <laughs> Get a new key. So it was like... Yeah. No, I'm not going to do that. So I, I just, I just hope for game for every- Windows Live has been defunct for a while now, right? Yeah, That's they totally they, been dismantled for. Yeah, they nuked. It. Yeah, I forget how long yeah. was that this year or maybe last year and the last year. I think that's, why they've, it, gotta I, do, that's yeah. why they've got to make such a good effort here because like I think yeah. I think the kind of Windows 
gaming initiative still has the stink of games for Windows Live. It does. Uh, it does. That's what I'm saying. That's like when you say me. like to show that Microsoft cares about PC gamers, I, they don't. And there's really nothing <laughs> like just adding like you're saying to show like put some exclusive or, or, or console that were formerly console exclusive titles on the PC. After like Brad saying with the game for Windows Live, dirty stank on their dick. Like it's gonna, it's it's not going. I'm not just gonna be like, oh man. First of all, I'm not even upgraded to Windows 10 right now. I'm on Windows 7. Yeah, same. So like even even that alone, where I'm like, I'm gonna wait until like when I see Brandon tweeting, they had a, he had to fucking. What did you have to do so that oh your computer didn't shut down I, I oh, can't even, or go to oh sleep? My God. I, can't even. I had right. to create a PowerShell script. Right. To, so that to initiate you, after each Windows update so that my computer would not randomly so turn itself on in the middle of the night. Oh exactly. God. Right. And that's what I'm saying. So it's like, I don't, <laughs> there's nothing that that stanky dick is going to do for me that's going to make me not think that it's a stanky Microsoft dick that doesn't care about me. So I, my, my only I, real concern is like, you, you know, with the DRM wise, how the Windows Store works for its games. Yeah. And if and if it's going to really have a detrimental effect on the way on me just opening a game and playing the fucking thing and not having problems with like activation and things like that. Are they going to chill the hell out on how intrusive, yeah. you know, like games for Windows Live was and how much it hindered your ability to just play a game at all? It was really obnoxious sometimes with uh, with uh, certain games that I was having experiences with, and like it lost. Uh, it, I had Gears of War one on PC, and then it just lost that I had it. I didn't have it anymore. Mm, First, yeah. I, I don't know why it just wasn't on my game for Windows Live account anymore. But hey, you uh, can buy. Hey, I, uh, uh, as per Brad's support, you can buy another uh, copy of the game uh, <laughs> if you would like to. <laughs> so, that's I'm actually speaking for games for I'm Windows just, Live. Yeah, that, that's all I'm worried about is is how intrusive. A a anything Microsoft is doing in terms of like DRM for their games that come from the Windows Store, and if I'm gonna have you play problems, uh, you know that that kind of level of bullshit. Yeah. All right. So uh, I think that's it for uh, the quick hits. We've got some game releases. Katie's end. Do you want to uh, you want to shoot through these as the honorary yeah. new yeah. release guy every time? Go ahead. Yeah. Baby. All right, so February 17th, we got Operation Wildfire for CSGO, which we talked about earlier. We did. Yes, right. we did. So new skins, uh, new, like, Champ talked about it a bunch, too, but... A new bunch knife, of new maps. Scott! A new the knife, Bowie yes. Knife. Actually, I really, like, actually really like that knife, and I actually really want to try to get one, but uh, I won't. I I've learned my lesson. I'm not going to open any more cases, I say to myself. What's the I verdict on the new skins? Like I know some are really uh, there's quite a few good ones. I like six or seven of them personally. Out Dude, of the, if, you, if you're yeah. if you're into like uh, kind of role playing your skins like I am for CT and T side, the Scout, yeah. this new Scout skin is just one. You've been talking about the new Scout skin. Top really notch. Like, it's so yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah, I know that the op is one of APL's like personal favorites. It's one of <laughs> the you know, elite the build. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, not a fan of that ugly thing. I don't get what they were doing with that, but. Um, there's yeah. A, yeah, there's definitely a, few, a decent decent amount of skins in there. The so it's worth putting. Pretty good too. Yeah, that one looks really good. The MP7 one is fucking nuts. I really only ever buy the operation for the coin, so I can just display the coin that you get. <laughs> Your bronze oh, coin. <laughs> My bronze coin. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, I'm not doing any of these actual missions. Who gives a fuck about some fucking CS:GO comic book that they're trying to push? Like, you know. Oh I don't God. Know. They're, they add a little bit. If you don't know what the operations, they add like a little bit of story, which is really fucking laughable. I remember, oh, like, was it two operations ago where it started out? Every time yeah, you started a mission, the they, guy was like, like a real deep voice. And yeah. you're like, what the fuck is They kind of put some comic <laughs> strips in there and, and yeah. have little um, uh, story bits before you start a mission. And, and, that's and I guess I can appreciate big. the effort, but, you know, CSGO is not exactly a uh, story driven franchise. Never has been. It's so. just not something that you go into like caring about because they never yeah. gave you a reason, a reason. to want yeah. <laughs> to read a CS:GO story. I don't so know if you played Condition most people zero. It. Like if they did something, <laughs> champ, where, like I have it and out. I want to. I almost want to get oh, yeah? zero and, and and play through it because I've seen. Oh, you got to do a playthrough that. I'm game. really yeah. curious because I I've seen um Joel play through an incredible orb and like oh, yeah. watching him struggle with some of the missions. I guess some <laughs> some of them are just really hard or kind of kind of broken. I think yeah, is broken is the word or something it like is. that. Yeah, like, I can see a game like Counter Strike having single players just having so many like spawn corridors. Yeah, stuff yeah. Like that. it's condition zero is a fucking beast. Oh, I, I hope you do that, Shan. <laughs> I will watch that whole playthrough. Um, yeah, so that's so, that. Go ahead. But yeah, uh, for what's coming out in the future, uh, tomorrow, 
uh, only on PC, and I think mobile, I could be wrong. I know it's not on the consoles yet, but the new Telltale, oh god, it'll either be really good or really bad, uh, The Walking Dead Michonne miniseries. It's only going to be three episodes. It's on sale uh, for less than $15. You can pick it up, get all three like little season pass they do. So I'm actually looking forward to it. I really like for this one. Is this? I'm assuming is this a separate? I didn't read. Is this a totally separate from the other Walking Dead stuff they've done? Like a new? I'm not sure. Alone? Okay. I know it's going to be like all new characters, most likely. Yeah. But I'm I'm interested if they're going to like try and connect it at all. Because but, uh, if that's the case, I'll probably will buy this and just if I can play it. Because I don't I didn't complete all the other um, whatever the the other Walking Dead ones. So maybe maybe I'll. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. yeah, after that, uh, this is more for me than anyone else, but Disgaea, about a decade old, like PS2, mm. it's, it's, it's a long running series, like tactical, like strategy RPG, uh, oh, that's getting a PC release, which looks to be like the UI has been really upgraded. I think they might be getting mod support. I have to look at these new, uh, yeah, it's, uh, no, I, actually I was wrong, but Someone out there will find a way to mod. Actually, <laughs> I was wrong. But uh, yeah, I've been looking forward to replaying that. It's really good. Mm. It's a classic. But uh, yeah, other than that, also coming out on the twenty third is Plants vs Zombies: Garden Warfare Two, which I never played. I don't know if any of you have oh, played. Is that really coming oh. out, man? I feel like I haven't yeah. heard anything about that game since the, the trailer at E three. Yeah. I I feel like I heard about that coming out yesterday, like on an ad, <laughs> like YouTube. Mm. But yeah, that comes Hop-Cap, out. And- Hopcap feels like it is just this cog in the you know billion dollar machine that is EA. Now. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember yeah. when Hopcap used to be like a cool oh, God, innovative used to stand company? for something? What like, was the- Do you remember the Peggle days? Yeah. What was the- oh, those were good days. <laughs> yeah. What was the the fireworks? And there was like the you have to light the fuses for. Oh God, did any of you play that? I don't think it was I the Popcap. So. Um, there was the dragon, and you had to. Fuck it, never mind. It was good. <laughs> it was really good, <laughs> just I swear. Like, give it up. Oh, I, I, I believe you. Thank you. <laughs> Someone in chat probably knows. But uh, yeah, and finally, the best I don't know if you guys remember Super yes. Hot. Super Hot. Yes, I remember watching yeah, all this. I'm ready to play that footage. It looks cool. Yeah, I'm really interested in that one. That comes out on the 25th. Okay. But that's going to do it for I, I our... Kick, I kick-started Super Hot like... Yeah, two years ago oh, really? or something. Years ago? Oh, yeah, okay. it's one of the only one of the only things I've ever backed on Kickstarter. Mm-hmm. Okay, there you go. All right, so, so yeah. we're gonna get into thank you, Katie Zen, for doing the new releases as always. Oh, anytime. With a deft and beautiful hand. It's my pleasure. Well, thank you. All right, so we're gonna do. Uh, we got some viewer questions here, and uh, then we're gonna get out of get out of your guys' hair uh, and off of your either radio or screen. Okay, so Hardballer twenty five asks. So my friend said he wants... Okay, God. We're starting off with a hardballer question. Let me just mentally prep myself. Okay. Hardballer25 says, So my friend said he wants to see if I got a baby arm. I'm not sure what he means. Can, mean, can you guys help me? He's like asking you if you <sighs> have a spare baby arm like hiding somewhere. Okay. He yeah. Pulled. Could he... Did he perhaps watch you lift and he was unimpressed and he told you, <laughs> man, you got a baby oh, arm. That could also be, yeah, there's, multi- there's multiple, there's multiple, you got a baby arm. Answers to this. Oh, man. Yeah, he saw, he yeah, saw how you How much do curling. you lift, Hardballer? How much do you lift? I'd be curious to what Hardballer lifts in ben- like benches, deadlifts. Hardballer, can we get some stats? I don't even know if he's here right now, but yeah, maybe for next week. Hopefully. <laughs> I agree. It was Rocket Mania. Sorry. That was the name of the game? Yeah, right. that was the name. You guys have to play Rocket Mania. That game was... <laughs> Um, I, I like Katie Zen's analysis that he was <laughs> that he was lifting in the gym and it was weak. He man, said, you got, got a baby arm, arm man. <laughs> I don't know, hardballer. I'm not. I mean, you're friends with. It sounds like you're friends with some very questionable people, so you might want to just it. ask your friend. I mean, yeah. Why are you asking us? I guess yeah. maybe he's embarrassed if he has to ask if it's like some slang for something. Yeah, I don't know what true. that could possibly be. But if it's slang for something, maybe he's, yeah, he doesn't want to be. Just look up baby arm on uh, yeah. Urban Dictionary and just see what comes <laughs> up. <laughs> this, is, this is the kind of question that makes you think like somewhere in there, he's like hidden chodes and we have to find it. Uh, <laughs> it could only be that kind of question. Yeah, I don't think we have to look that deep in hardballer questions. I, I think they're pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> but, um all right, uh, we have another, uh, we have a actually insightful question from Mr. Wicked Rhyme. 
And he asked, as betas in the gaming industry have changed from beta to demo, do you think the name beta should be used uh, much more sparsely? Which is interesting. Interesting question. I spy an opinion in that question. And an opinion, yeah. And an opinion. <laughs> Um, I mean, hmm. I think at this point, beta beta doesn't really mean that much. Like no. beta beta and demo are are more or less the same now. Here's the thing. The, I mean, it's like better? how far how far from beta to release? That's that's the question. It's okay. like the the division beta is what two weeks from release? That's not a beta. It's not like there's going to be no major changes between now and the time that the game releases. It's just not going to happen. There's no way. There can be minor bug fixes, but there's not going to be any major changes. Yeah, it's like if if there's no time uh, for major things to be implemented, there's no way it's a fucking beta anymore. They've gotten the final release, and they're just giving you a piecemeal. It's it's really I don't know. It's just it's it seems almost like a shield these days to call it a beta, yeah. where and, they can hide behind uh, bugs or whatever are going on in their game. So yeah, I agree with that. I would also say I'm thinking about this totally in terms of like marketing. It, yeah, okay, go ahead. No, go ahead. As, as far as like just marketing goes, what sounds better? Beta, like beta, I want to get in before anybody else play, sure. you know. Mm -hmm. And then demo. Demo is like unfinished is basically implied. I feel like he's saying this What's backwards that? though, because wasn't demo used yeah, way before demo, beta? I mean, de to me, demo means demo like always the first used. level of a finished right. game. And, yeah. and, right. and it gives right. you a taste. Yeah, exactly. and it gives you a taste and to see if you want to buy it. Right. That's what a demo is. Like when yeah. you used to get the PlayStation, when I used to get my official PlayStation magazine and I yeah, put in demo, and yeah. I play a demo put in the Metal Gear. Code. You know, you put or in the whatever. Code on Crash Bandicoot, you could play the demo for Spyro. But yeah, right, I, exactly. I agree with the idea that it's more of a, a marketing scheme in terms of like getting pe uh, people want the uh, stature of playing the game before other people and like getting a leg up in some yeah. sort of multiplayer game that yeah. has a beta, things like that. That's that's why I feel like the Overwatch beta is, is so pined over is like people want to get their experience with the game so they can crush the fuck out of people when the game <laughs> actually comes out and they play against people who haven't given been given a chance to touch it yet. So Yeah, but that, I think the Overwatch beta is a decent example of a, yeah, it a is real a beta. Because like yeah, clearly... Clearly, Blizzard could benefit from just letting, like, opening the floodgates and just having it be a big marketing thing. Yeah. But they're they're not doing that. Not uh, even doing a pre-order beta guaranteed access right. thing. So. Yeah, but I think the like looking at looking at the I think the the time between beta and release is actually a pretty good barometer for whether it's a beta or like it basically a glorified demo. And I think the the closer to release that they call something a beta is like the less respect they have for you as a customer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. That's a good, that's a really good point. Um, one day equals one disrespect and just <laughs> out back to days. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. All right. Um, I am the Seth. Uh, really random question here, but what is your favorite side dish or saute well, we to cook? Three, we have three like kind of food questions yeah we do we're just hitting in a row here i'm currently cooking up beer braised mushroom and onions okay favorite side, side dish. dish huh you know i really like going to ralph's and they they sell uh bags of frozen arby's fries and i really like to put those on a bacon sheet and just pop them in the oven for half an hour and have some curly Damn. do they arby's. what is that true? yeah yeah what? they do they Ralph, ralph's definitely sells them i don't know about other stores but they oh, okay. have packaged they sell them at arby's other fries stores. we don't have a ralph's here but they have them at other stores yeah i didn't realize that's that. got to be my favorite side dish favorite side dish man i mean it's, uh, it's easy mac and cheese mac yeah mac, is, oh, mac and it cheese starts and ends there <laughs> I don't, why did i even have to question what brandon's was gonna be yeah mac and cheese is good um i make dinner rolls dinner rolls okay. yeah I have a bread machine I use. Oh man, you're a real bread wow, nerd. I like fancy. it. You got a bread machine. Yeah. 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 That's nice. A bread nerd. <laughs> <laughs> you got one of them fancy bread machines. My mom used to have a my mom for years asked my dad for I don't know why. Like my anyway, we were never wealthy, but one year my mom got a bread machine and she was like the happiest she'd ever she'd ever been. And she made some good bread out of that thing. So I feel you on the bread machine. But again, I, I called my mom a nerd because she had a bread machine. So that's why I had to call you a nerd. It's all uh, good. Bread nerd sounds like a Reddit. <laughs> a Reddit? Slash Stop. Reddit. I'm not a Redditor, okay? I don't pick things up on Reddit. Baby. Stop. Okay. So, hold on. Before we go any further, oh, Scott, no. Brad, Scott browses Stop. Reddit every day. <laughs> Stop. Does that not make you a Redditor? No, Just because, because you I don't, don't sign in and comment. 
You still browse. Okay, it. I may, I may actually you, sign in. I may actually have an account. If you I have Reddit account, mostly logged makes... out and you don't comment, I think it is fair to say you're not a redditor. Thank you, thank you. Because I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't upvote anything. I don't downvote anything. I don't reply to people. Yep. You that just make so videos and wait. put it in your Twitch stream. <laughs> <laughs> you just you you reply to Reddit comments in your I Twitch do. stream. You know what? It's so bad you because I do. I will get triggered by Reddit and directly say I was triggered by Reddit in yep. some rant that I do on Twitch. But again, I'm not. Which in theory, I don't actually engage with the community. You're, you're engaging because okay. your videos get posted. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, what else are you gonna do? Reddit's probably yeah. one of the best examples of like an aggregate source of right. information. Yeah. So you know, yeah. where else are you gonna go? I don't know. Brad's really. He's really strict on this though. He wants me to admit that I'm a redditor, and I'm just not. I'm not ready to do it. I don't think I can. I like having Brad on the cast because he can just call out Scott. Yeah, he just calls when, me out. When, when Scott's like, oh, I have I'm, my I'm, own subreddit that I didn't create that subreddit, though, to be Same fair. thing here. I, I, I don't know what the it. hell is wrong with people. There's, there's nothing going on. You're a moderator there. of your own subreddit. I know, you. Brad. <laughs> I'm sure you did that, but I. <laughs> God damn it. Um, all right. Well, Scott goes there every morning and he uh, makes just, sure that he reads every post and that every everyone's post. being nice or else he will <laughs> shadow ban you. That's right. Um, all right. Say hello to Amy has a question. Uh, chicken wings or chicken nuggets? Nuggets. Uh, nuggets. Nuggets. Totally. Two totally I think, different I mean, things. They're no, they're, they're pretty different. similar. They're pretty similar because well, like boneless well, chicken wings are basically chicken well, nuggets. Well, if, if, Bill, if the question is are they boneless or not, uh, I, it, 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 if it I'm going to eat chicken, chicken wings, wings, I'm not eating goddamn boneless oh. chicken wings. You fucking oh, my savage. God. I, let's start this conversation. Let's go boneless. right now, Mark. There's nothing wrong with boneless go. chicken wings. I like boneless chicken wings. I'd, now that I think about <laughs> it, here? if oh, boneless okay. chicken wings are in, included, like I'll go I'm chicken I'm not saying wings. I won't eat boneless chicken wings, but as far as like, oh, my, I can't. As a default, I have to always go boneless. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Go I I I enjoy boneless chicken in the form of like a nugget, but I really, really do enjoy sauce that would come on like barbecue chicken wings. So okay. I I, yeah, I like but that's the thing. That's yeah. like that's I think that's where the distinction is. Nugget is a, like a shape. Nugget, yeah. A chicken nugget is basically like a shaped boneless chicken wing. Mm-hmm. But like I, there's there there are really good boneless chicken wings that that you can get at like a, well I'm thinking of a place specifically called Pluckers in Texas. It's like mm -hmm. a wing place, but they do great chicken tenders, which is like boneless wings, and you can get any of the like any of like garlic, hot sauce, buffalo sauce, anything on the boneless version. And it's like yeah. why do I want bones, in in like no. some people some people just don't enjoy work the work of eating around the bone and dealing with like possible I mean, I can, animal fat i, I, I am one of those people i fucking hate eating around the bone tell it's me just scott personal do you preference. Have, like what what do you like about having bones bone on the in flavor flavor yeah flavor? It's so much and hey flavorful. that's complete that's completely rational and yeah I, it is i can't <laughs> argue it's just like i don't like the manufacture again like i not eat chicken nuggets but like it's a totally <laughs> Different kind of experience, like eating. I was bones. not under the impression that you yeah, would not I, eat chicken nuggets. I know no one, clear. no one here is under that impression. I'm sure, but There's Scott, so no one's attacking different. you right now. Okay, I know. I thought I'm, I'm being so triggered. You well, sound like, like a redditor, and I can, I can uh. respectfully <laughs> fuck you, Brad. I can respectfully disagree with Mark as far. I understand if he's saying he doesn't like bones and doesn't want to contend with animal fat, then of course, bone-in wings are not going to be your preference. And I've had boneless wings that are okay, but if it's for me. And if you're thinking of the actual, like, if you're saying chicken wings, I think by default, the Americana chicken wing is bone in. I don't think it's boneless. Yeah, and goddamn any time, any wild wings ever are garbage wings, boneless yeah. wings. See, Scott doesn't know what to do with his hands because he should be <laughs> typing on Reddit right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> anyway, but I just, okay. So is it, I am I getting, Katie Zen, you haven't said anything about, are you boneless too? No, no, too? no. I perfectly, I'm so even on this. I see the pros and cons for each oh. side. I totally okay. get what you mean by like nuggets feeling like so fake and like manufactured. But at the same time, I'm a simple man. I don't want to eat around the bone. I want to okay. just, I want to have it all. I don't want to have to, I don't want to feel like I'm missing any meat. I want it all like in one piece. Yeah. I mean, I think when, I get Scott, when Scott says nuggets, I think Scott's thinking of like Wendy's or McDonald's no, chicken I nuggets. I just had Wendy's oh, chicken yeah. nuggets today. They're great. Uh, no, I'm not. No, I agree. No, I've had decent. <laughs> I know what you're saying about boneless wings. I've had decent boneless wings. I just, as a preference. No, and no, I no yeah. There's no thing. problem with having the preference of bone in. I just, I'm. Yeah. I like. I, I don't like having to. Like the main thing with me is I don't like leaving food on the bone. 
I always feel like I'm never eating bone wing like bone and wings efficiently. You just got to really way. just keep yeah, chewing. You, until you, you, have every, to, you have to just fucking let of go time. of all of your inhibitions and just suck that bone really dry. <laughs> <laughs> you, oh my God. you suck no. out, crack the bone open and suck that goddamn marrow out of it. <laughs> if I, eat I mean, it's the, you I, look disgusting. It's like, but dude, I mean, we're fucking animals. That's that's what we were meant to do. We're not meant to have these fucking perfectly sized little pieces of breast meat. <laughs> yeah, but deep Scott, we have this. evolved to that point though, where we that's can convenient we, we can conveniently make these things that we just pop in and we don't have <laughs> we to do can. any goddamn work in order to eat it it's just so simple. i guess i like no, i see that, that you, you like bone and wings because it's like a caveman fantasy it is. for you <laughs> scott wants to be primal i like being primal about that and also on personally i just like the i like the taste like for me anyway having like a really good bone in wing from like a, a good i don't know that's my no, point. i'm still a tender guy it. i want crispy tenders with extra yep. breading on it oh. that's where i stand i don't even want chicken nuggets i just want full-on tenders with a lot of breading on the outside and i want to run over to jordan that crunch right oh please Stop we get talking. it, APL. You just want to be different. Yeah. Listen, I just want to post my opinions on Reddit, which you have basically pushed me to do. <laughs> oh, I'm about to go on. I'm about to create a bone in only subreddit for, for chicken wings or something right now. Just go I'm ahead. Make another smell, YouTube yeah. rant. <laughs> I fucking will. <laughs> and I will say that the podcast triggered me, not Reddit for once. <laughs> I think um, there are right. some places that do good chicken tenders that don't yeah. do good chicken wings. Okay. But if you go to a place that does good chicken wings, they probably do good chicken tenders. Okay. Yeah. Same theory. Yeah, you're probably right. You know, we're gonna have to test the theory. Let's all go out and just, uh, you know, Sounds have good. a have a nice week long romp of chicken wings. <laughs> and <cheese sandwiches>. I <laughs> want and different establishments for a week. Thank you, uh, Brian. Start the food podcast. Seven. God, we've been beating around the bush enough. We really need to. All right, so we got one more chicken related question. For oh some my reason. God, it is from Floris, which what again I question? really don't understand. To me, this is not a question at all. But it is ten piece chicken McNuggums or a six piece. The phrasing and to of me, this question. Yeah. Eating chicken McNuggets or chicken McNuggets, you would want more as opposed to less. But why? Maybe I'm overthinking it. Am Do you I want more food or less food? I feel like that's the question, right? What kind <laughs> of question is that? Well, I, I think like, six of course is just, more that, food. That is such a small number of chicken nuggets. I don't know. Right. Like, I, I, I mean, because whenever, all right, whenever I'm at home and I make something that's like bite size that goes in the oven, like for instance, pizza rolls, sure. I. There is no, <laughs> there's no surface area left on the plate. Yeah, you'll get that. I, thing I feel like I'm oh, robbing yeah. myself if I don't put 25 to 30 <laughs> pizza rolls onto a plate and, and, and get all. I'm of not gonna lie, Mark. The last time I had an experience with a pizza roll was over a year ago, and I, it, it was so destructive to my internal organs <laughs> that I have not. I mean, again, I'm, and I'm eating better too, so I'm not, I'm not exactly having pizza rolls. But how do you do they destroy you like they did me or no? No, I, I, I not really. I, I've never had a terrible experience. Maybe you just had a bad batch. I might have had a bad batch, but it, you're just not ready for the flavor, the full flavor of Totino's <laughs> pizza rolls. Pizza. They destroyed me. <laughs> oh, shit. Um, Man, I want some Guy Fieri branded pizza rolls. Just how do I have an emote for you? Bite size oh, stuff. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> I just want Guy Fieri branded bite size food to eat. Yeah. How is he not? Is he not in like the frozen food market yet? I mean, he's got, um, I think he is. I haven't really seen anything in the supermarkets. I think I, right. I, th I think he does have a couple of supermarket things, but I, I think he's like sauces I, or something. I but. don't remember if it's just like sauces or if he, if he has like uh, TV dinners. Uh, oh, uh, God. God. Now, now I need to look it up. Guy does Fieri, call him flavor frozen <laughs> food. I think he has burgers. Is Oh, he has sausage, pizza, egg rolls. All right, hold on. <laughs> Turkey chili with mac and cheese, oh. s'mores indoors pizza. What? The cheeseburger, fuck? cheeseburger ravioli. Oh my god, you're right. Skirt steak uh for carne asada, pepperoni says, Italian sausage pizza, green I'm chili and pepper hungry. jack beef patties. Oh my god, he's got sauces, he's got frozen burgers, he's, he's got, got a lot of egg stuff. rolls, ravioli, everything that you could fucking ask. Jesus he's got flavor. <laughs> he's old, even got like chicken sausages. What in the fuck is an old school pepperoni pizza egg roll? <laughs> this has to be a favorite product. This old cannot school, be real. Old school spelled with a K. This no. is K-O-O-L. I am pasting this. No. This cannot be real. That is a meme. That is not real. 
Oh, just like they made him <laughs> back in the old country. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, he's also got coffee, Flavor Town roasts. Holy shit. I can't. Caramel I can't. apple coffee? What kind of fucking abomination is this man creating over here? Did this Frankenstein caramel coffee. Caramel apple, apple coffee. coffee. Banana what? Foster coffee. Can't. It's it unbelievable. Says, literally on this package, it says Flavor Town on the top and then more flavor <laughs> on the bottom. I can we verify? I mean, this looks like it's legit though. I think these are oh, real products. Guy, guy Oh my god, like I need to get a cake uh, uh, a Keurig machine and buy these Guy Fieri K cups. I fucking need cinnamon <laughs> all right, cinnamon roll, hot fudge brownie. Uh, uh there there's one called unleaded decaf. <laughs> that's, that's the best yes. name for a brew. <laughs> oh god. It's what? unbelievable. Oh, man, you really can't. There's nothing you can make up about Guy Fieri that isn't already true. That's the most amazing <laughs> thing about him. It's like, let me tell you about a product. Tell me if this product is real or not. And then you would describe those egg roll, pizza egg rolls. And you know, you'd, be, you'd be right. It exists. God, he's killing the food market right now. <laughs> he really he's is. doing big things for big people. <laughs> Leaving no rock unturned, uh, Guy Fieri. Um, all right. Well, I should, that concludes our viewer question. So, Brandon, let's, uh, let's talk about the fact that there is no iTunes podcast review of the week this week. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, no one submitted one. So, uh, there's, there, I mean, I can't read something that's not there, but you exactly. could be, you could be next week's star of the show, uh, at this, at this point in the show. Uh, if you submit a review on iTunes and, uh, you give us five stars and you tell us, I don't know, something about you, something about us. Uh, I, I, I really, I really miss reading some of like the deep reviews that yeah. we used to get. Um, so I would love to, we'd love to hear from you. That's the one way that you can guarantee your feedback will be heard is we, we read every iTunes review. Uh, we don't feature all of them on the podcast, but if there's only one, then that is the one we feature. Uh, right. unless it's like really, unless awful. it's so bad, like, that, yeah. like you, you would have to try to be bad enough to not get your review featured if you're the only one. So right. we've read gonna... reviews and deeply regretted reading them. That's true. Yeah, because we we have done that. Yes. Like we, we definitely feel a sense of duty when it comes to reading the review. If you're the only one, even if it's like bad, but there's a pretty low threshold. Yeah. Uh, and we, I mean, listen, I can't guarantee that you'll have positive reception, but I can guarantee <laughs> that, that you, you may be featured uh, in whatever, right. whatever that word means. So leave us five, leave us five stars. Uh, tell us something about yourself. Uh, tell us, you know, tell us what you like about the cast, what you don't like. I want to hear from you. Just rate us five stars. Like I want to. I want to hear from you. Wow. Whoa. Brandon never gets that intimate with Whoa. his microphone, so you, we better have some reviews next week, guys. But um, really fun cast uh, this week. Thanks again for Brad uh, to Brad for being on, popping your cherry, man. Good work. Thanks for having me on. Uh, how are you feeling? You feeling sore? You feeling good? I need to take a shower. It's amazing that you've been holding up that pink coffee cup this I know. entire time. Holding perfectly still. <laughs> yeah, the endurance is just crazy. Wearing, wearing those sunglasses. It's, um, yeah, too. I'm surprised. I thought you lived up in the Northwest, but it's apparently very bright where you are right now. Exactly. And Sham, thank you for coming on. It's always a oh, pleasure. Oh, no problem. This is good. This yeah, is a fun real one. fun. So, um, all right, guys. We will see you uh, next week for episode 226. You can follow all of us on Twitter. You can follow, obviously, KB Mod Gaming at KB Mod Gaming. Uh, I <laughs> <laughs> That's not actually it at all. Why did I just say that? <laughs> Jesus Christ! What is what even is the? Let's KB, start the cast KB over. Let's start again. You can just follow it. first. You can watch the podcast every Thank week you. at 10 p.m. Eastern time oh. on, here on Brandon, Twitch. You just do this. Yeah, Twitch.tv slash kbmod. You can follow us on Twitter at kbmodgaming. Uh, we have a Steam group. We have a Facebook page. We have a Discord. Uh, if you're interested, I mean. Twitter is like our main place of disseminating information, but we have a lot of places you can interact with us. You can follow us on Twitter. I'm at Volition, V-O-L-1, T-I-O-N. <laughs> Scott yes. is at APL Fisher. Mark is all, at All Sham No Wow. Brad is at Hutchison15. And David is at KDZen18. That's Zen, like uh, Z-E-N. I was going to describe it, but I don't know how to calm. describe it. <laughs> <laughs> Very calm. <laughs> yes. All right, guys. We will uh, see you next week. And uh, thanks a lot for listening. Farewell. See ya. <laughs> Wait. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs>
<laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs>